Good evening. Welcome to the Gray Town Council regular meeting of November 14th, 2023. This meeting is being held both in person and online as per our usual custom. I'm going to begin with roll call. Councillor Gass? Present. Councillor McGuire? Present. Councillor Meany? Present. Councillor Height? Here. And I'm Councillor Chapel. Um, to my right is interim town manager Josh Tiffany. If everyone could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, before I move on, um, Dan, you had a point of information. Yeah, said, we received this afternoon an email with an updated... meeting packet for tonight, but the document was actually labeled workshop packet. Oh, Do you, it? but it is in fact the meeting packet okay. that we're just about to start. Yep. Do you know what the difference is between this document and the one we had before? Yes, yeah, so I asked John to also post the updated one on the website um, and make a notation. So uh, there's a page on, pa on page 66 noting that it's just adding some additional correspondence we've received and related okay. to the public hearing. Okay. Um, but that is noted in the updated agenda. Um, we just felt it was important to include those correspondence um, this, in the public record. Yep, that's great. Uh, just yep. All my notes are in the other document, oh, okay. so I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> if there's something that. in that one that I need to bring forward. So um, it's, it really, it, they're all at the bottom of the packet and it's just additional letters essentially. Great, thanks. Um, okay, um, so I'm looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda, which um, today only includes the council meeting minutes from October 17th, 2023. So moved. Second. Okay, Ann? Yes. Dan? No. Oh, I should have asked you if you wanted to remove It's okay. It. Yep. Marty? Yes. Doesn't hurt Matthew? Yes. Uh, and I'm also yes, but it seems um, Dan has some edits, so... Would you like to remove that from the consent agenda? No, I, I can, um, it's not, it's a, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's that material that we need to make any changes. Okay, all right. So but I think going forward we do, and I'll, and I'll, um, I'll share that at another time. Okay. It's just, a, there's a missing vote, basically, but the vote to take things off the table <coughs> wasn't in, in the minutes, but the vote on the item itself is in the minutes, and I think that's good enough. Oh, I thought that I thought it was. In, we'll have to look at. Yeah, I'll look at it. That's again, fine. But, but yeah. okay, but it did. Pa those did pass for yeah. one. So you don't have to slow things okay. down now. Okay. Next up is public comments on non-agenda items. Limit three minutes per person. Comments are intended for information sharing, not discussion. Comments in excess of three minutes are welcome at the end of the agenda, prior to adjournment. Is there anyone here in the audience who has comments on non-agenda items? I was just um, talking about the festival that happened this year, the Wild Blueberry Festival, our seventh annual, um, with the intent to ask for a workshop that was mentioned. Yep. Um, I guess it has to be voted on or scheduled, you know, sometime in the future. Yeah, I was actually going to, I, I know you sent me an email, and I'm sorry I haven't replied. Um, we talked about it when I saw you last. Um, I was going to raise that as part of my, my chair comments at the end of the agenda. Okay. Did you, did you want to comment on it? Well, um, I just want to say publicly, um, it was our best ever, mm -hmm. biggest attendance, most vendors, most money raised, um, a lot of new things were offered. Is it ever perfect? No. That makes us eager to try it again the next year and change things up a little bit. Um, we just had a really good year, um, but because of its growth and popularity, um, the main issue is, I guess for the town, is safety on the streets and traffic. So that's something that's not just our committee and that's why the workshop would be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, we've already talked to the fire chief and with Mo So just to get the town's perspective on how we can make it um, easier for people not attending the festival to get through town and things like that. Um, but it was really successful and we can't wait for it to happen again. So save the date, August 10th, 2024. 
Thanks, Lacey. I'll, I'll go over um, the proposal for a workshop later. Um, does anyone else have comments on non-agenda items in the audience? I'm not seeing anyone's hand raised online. So I will close uh, public comments of non-agenda items at 7.18 p.m. I do have an adjustment to the agenda. Does anyone else have adjustments? I don't, I I don't no. No. Um, the only adjustment um, I need to make is the removal of um, action item four, which is the appointment of uh, Kaylee, I'm not, Callie, Kaylee, I'm not sure I'm saying her name right, Kaylee Elwell from um, the CEDC. She's actually um, asked that her application be removed from consideration. So everything from item number four down should move up one. So we'll end on item six instead of seven. Next up is a public hearing, and I'm looking for a motion to review and act upon approving a practical difficulty variance, or rather, excuse me, I'm gonna correct myself. I'm, I'm going to open the public hearing for um, the, uh, um, to review and act upon approving a practical difficulty variance for Aaron Watson, who has requested permission to create a second driveway entrance located at the end of Collier Brick Road. So this is the public hearing, and then we will vote um, after the public hearing concludes. Uh, is there, um, before we begin um, comments from the public, I'm just gonna ask um, our code enforcement officer, George Freilich, to come up and go over the process, if he would do that. Good evening, honorable members of the council. I'm George Froelich. I'm your um, assistant code enforcement officer here at the town of Gray. And as you're aware, this packet has some information in it that may not necessarily be applicable. So please allow me to frame what we're going to do in the, in the proper terms. Uh, under chapter 400, the street ordinance for the town of Gray, uh, section 1.4, appeals. B is the appeal of the public works director. Um, specifically, this is not a variance appeal. This is an appeal to overturn the decision of the public works director or to uphold it. So that's what our motion will be, is do we overturn or uphold the decision of the public works director? Um, the appeal to overturn or uphold should be limited to the decision based on chapter 400, 5.2 E1, hindered snow plowing operation. Drainage requirements, if any, have not been assessed at this time, nor uh, has a, um, uh, a permit has been received, but a plan for the driveway has not been received. So if we could just stay um, focused on the appeal being limited to um, upholding or overturning the decision based on hindered snow plowing operation. And at the time that you see fit, I would like to turn uh, the meeting over to our public works director, Tim Estes. Okay. Thank um, you. Could, sorry, thank you, George. Could you just um, cite the, the section number again? It was 500 some. I oh, I'm sorry, it's chapter 400. Oh, chapter 400, right, yep. I got that. Uh, 1.4, section 1.4 is appeals. Yep. And specifically 1.4B is the appeal to the public works director. You didn't say something about chapter 500? I thought you said something. Oh, I misspoke if I okay. said 500. All right. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Tim, would you mind just coming up and just giving us a quick overview also of your findings, just to set the stage <coughs> for comments? I am Tim Estes, the interim public works director. Um, in the Steve LaValle time, the Alec Dodd time, and as far as me taking over as interim public works director, we have never ever granted a driveway entrance off a hammerhead uh, because it does hinder snow removal, school buses turn around, and that's, that's pretty much section 405.2 is the hindering snowplow operations. Okay, 
Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Is there anyone here from the public who'd like to make a comment? Yeah, you can hand them out. That's great. You'll do fine. Thanks. If you could just um, state your name um, and your address and then sign in when you get a chance to. Oh, yeah, sorry. My name is Erin Watson. Um, I live at 99 Depot Road. Um, I type this up so it like sounds really weird, but um, I get like, yeah. Um, so good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight and giving me the opportunity to speak with you. Um, my name is Erin Watson. Um, I'm here tonight to request a practical difficulty variance, but now it's um, to change the decision. Um, made for a second access point to my home located at 99 Depot Road. My husband and I have tried everything we could think of over the last two winters to maintain a safe entrance to our property, both for us and our children and for our tenants. Um, the pictures really don't do justice to the severity of the steepness of the driveway, um, but really we're left with just one option, access through Collier Brook Road. Um, our first winter, we invested in a skid steer. My husband was free falling both into, like, into a depot road and down toward our house off a very large ledge. Um, in the second winter, we invested in a sander and a snow plow, and there were three major accidents in just one season, one resulting in my husband free falling down the driveway, uh, crashing into both my tenants' cars, which I attached a picture of that. Um, and Another one, he went off the side of the driveway and luckily there was a tree that kind of caught him from going really down a, a huge ledge. Um, and um, on the roadside part of the driveway, Depot Road, um, the speed limit is, I wrote 45, but it, I drove, it's 40. Um, so the speed limit's 40 miles per hour, um, but people go way faster than that. Um, and last year I slid into Depot Road multiple times and um, the scariest incident was with my son in the car. Um, we're nearly hit by a large utility vehicle, putting my son's life, my life, and the other driver's life all in danger. Um, in addition, my fear is that in the case of an emergency, a fire truck or ambulance would have no way of coming to save us. I'm doubtful they would be able to get to us even in the warmer months, but I am positive that in the winter months, no emergency vehicle would be able to get to us and save us. Um, the impacts of safety affects all of our neighbors as well because if there was ever a fire it would be nearly impossible to stop the spread of it um, I also have brought in copies tonight of the fire chief which I realize now is in the packet um, but I brought in a copy of it just stating that he you know also agrees that Collier Brook would be probably the mo more ideal option to get a fire engine or ambulance in there um, and um, I understand that what I'm asking comes with a lot of concerns for the town and um, surrounding neighbors. And I would like to take this opportunity to address some of those concerns. I understand there has been some confusion that we want to like join the subdivision um, or something like that, which is not the case. Uh, we will maintain our primary entrance of Depot Road and would not like to change our address. We just want to be able to use a public town road to access our land. Another concern is the town plows and I, under no circumstances, expect anyone to change anything about the way they're plowing the snow. Um, sorry, I like lost my place. Okay, yeah. Um, they can plow, you know, they can plow us in if they want to, and we will maintain the driveway. Um, anything that makes their lives easier, we don't mind. Um, we will plow and maintain our own entryway, and we will push all of the snow up toward our property ensuring no additional snow be moved from our property to the road. Um, we will also never be parking in the road, so there will be no obstructions to block turning around, nothing like that. Um, it would really be 
you know, kind of the same of ex exactly how it is, but just a pat down path. Um, and we will, um, we will be in no one's way. Um, the second entry point will sincerely have no effect on anyone that surrounds us. Um, lastly, water drainage has been brought up as an issue and we've already remedied that. Um, when we moved in, we uh, installed a large covert um, and drainage system, actually improving the condition of the runoff compared to how we found it. Um, when I first came uh, to the town with my concerns about two years ago now, um, we originally worked together and we're hoping to remedy the situation by working on our current driveway um, from its extreme steepness. But the facts are that we do not own the land on either side of the driveway to widen it and to continue dr uh, digging down any further would be very little help. Uh, by digging down even only a couple of feet, it would continue to significantly narrow the path, creating additional safety concerns because the steepness already makes it so you lose sight of the front of your vehicle. So if we made it into a one lane narrow passageway, then eventually it would pretty much ensure a head on collision um, because if two people were going up, I mean, you cannot see each other at all. So, um, and after investing tons of time and money in the driveway, it's as good as it will ever be. Um, we've truly exhausted all of our options. Um, and with the second entry point, my family and I will be able to safely leave our house in the winter and not threaten the safety of other drivers on Depot Road. In the process, um, emergency vehicles will be able to access our home and do their jobs, also giving me peace of mind that my children are safe in our home. And in a couple of years, when it's time, they can walk down and catch the already established bus stop and not waiting on the side of kind of scary Depot Road. Um, so thank you all so much for your time and consideration tonight. And I did attach um, pictures in the back of the accident, one of them, many, and you know, so forth. Um, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to comment? Hi, um, you can just thank you. State your name and address. Yep, for the Melissa Foster, 10 Collier Brook Road in Gray, and I'm the president of the um, Collier Brook Homeowners Association. Um, I actually found out about this because one of the um, homeowners brought a letter to me, so I wasn't even aware of this until somewhat recently. Um, so I, I feel for them. Uh, 100%. I'm a mother. Um, I get the safety concerns, um, and I can appreciate all that. As the homeowners, we have some concerns in reference to what does this all mean for us within the development. Um, there's excess runoff. The drainage is horrible. Um, all of the drainage does end up coming down to um, a right away on my property. Um, because there's a, a large culvert there. Um, so for me, um, when it comes to whether or not it should be overturned, some of my questions would be, what is the plan? How are they going to put the driveway in? Is it going to be a contractor? What do they plan for um, cutting trees, um, ground removal for erosion, etc.? cetera? Um, you know, there's, there's a lot here um, other than just, you know, putting in a driveway so that we can have people safe, which again, you know, I feel for them. I completely understand when they were putting in the driveway for that property. Um, you know, my husband worked for the town of Cumberland for a good number of years in public works, and he's like, I don't know about that. So, you know, some of the things that have come up now, I'm kind of surprised were not addressed prior to it being established. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Go 
ahead. Okay, so I'm Sam Manley, I'm Aaron's husband. Um, kind of just speaking off the cuff here, but um, as far as the concerns that she brought up, um, kind of our intention is to just make sort of a parking area down there. I mean, it, we would love to make a driveway that goes all the way to our property, but really what we're looking for is just a access for when we're clearing the snow from the driveway that we can move everyone down to and also just kind of use just if we can't get there. Um, so as far as what the plan is, uh, that's my dad right there. He's my contractor. We actually built the house. Um, so yeah, that kind of just answers a couple of those questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Can, can, oh. Oh, not yet. Not yeah, yet. we'll have sorry. to talk about it. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah, okay. sorry. We'll, we might call you back up later. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Hi, my name is Michael Marshall. I live on Coley Brook Road. Um, I oppose this temporary driveway or whatever they're talking about. Um, you, they're calling it a hardship or a difficulty, but they developed it. Uh, Miss Watson and them have been involved. In, you know, they developed it. So they made their driveway. They should have to improve it. Whatever it takes to get in and out of that, I feel for them. I don't. I certainly don't have any hard feelings towards them, but I don't think that Collier Brook, with all the agreements, the town, the planning board, um, you made with the Vesta Housing, uh, Main State Housing, that you can change things. You, as you can see in the packet, when it was developed, you refused to let the 18. Um, condos that are there, be able to access the hammerhead. I'm sorry, a little nervous. I don't talk no, from people doing often. Great. You're fine. You're great. <laughs> but you, they were made to build a driveway around the hammerhead. Gentleman says he only wants a temporary one. He's been warned by the town to stop accessing that property through Collierbrook. They still access it. They don't care. They just will keep using it. And when they say they want to use it for temporary, I, I'm sorry, I just don't believe it. And as for he's saying temporary, she's saying emergency vehicles. So it, I think they should take the investment um, of their duplex and fix their driveway. Um, it, it just, why should the Collier Brook Association as a subdivision be affected because the people other people looked at that property that they own and they refused to buy it because they did not have access from Collier Brook Road. They decided to gamble and build that driveway and build that house there. It, then, you know, you can't create a hardship and then say it's a hardship. So I think they should have to improve their driveway, whatever way it takes, and have access off Depot Road. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Uh, let's just hear from everyone first, and then we'll come back if you have second comments. Yep, go ahead, ma'am. Yep, sorry. Hi. Hi, you guys. My name is Michael Brown. Long story. I'm an 18B Collier Book. That's lot 6B. I drive down a very steep driveway a whole lot of times for 29 years. In fact, 29 years ago, I stood before this town hall as you were deciding whether to make the development a condominium or not. We pay dues every year for insurance to take care of all the, pro all the area in the development that is not owned by a, a 
owned by a, a single family. It's a common area, so that if anything happened, there's no liability. We so it's a heck of a lot of in, in money, and, and we and uh, we have to pay the insurance. Now with this dr driveway or whatever you're discussing it to be, I heard the word tenant. That means more than one car. That means more than two cars. That means more than three cars. Adding to a dead end road, there's kids talking about lovely children. It's a very quiet road. Everybody has a dog. Not that they're running around or anything, but they're walking their dogs. It's been for 29 years, almost 30 years, a quiet, dead end road. That's just the color. The fact that there is a law that says nobody, that you can't access a hammerhead with a driveway, period, whether it's steep or not, there, it's, a mute, it's a mute issue. There's nothing to be talking about here. When I was the first person to uh, buy the lot in the in, back in '94, I was uh, I was in my 40s, an ex hippie, settling down, taking care of elderly parents, and uh, so it was a nervous racking it was a nerve wracking process of dealing with buying a house. And when my neighbor bought her house, Kathy. She wanted her own driveway. Everybody in Collier Brook ha Road has their own driveway except lot six. We have to have an ease, we go around the hammerhead. She was denied uh, her own driveway for the for citing the very law that you can't access the hammerhead. So I have historical law and just a little flavor of uh, what, what, what Collier Brook Road is all about. The Collier Brook Association, it's a very quiet neighborhood and I, it doesn't make any sense to have this intrusion into the, this very safe, safe neighborhood. That's it. Great. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else have some initial comments? George, you had some follow-up? Um, yes, uh, I believe to what I Oh, you have to come up to the podium, sorry. <laughs> People on TV and uh, recording can't hear you. <coughs> Uh, so to elaborate on um, what Michael has just uh, set forward, we did have a visit from Avesta Housing to the code office, as well as a letter that is provided um, to the council. And uh, they, I would just like to call the attention to the second page of the Avesta Housing letter and to the second paragraph of said letter to clarify the statement that was just previously made by Michael. Is that in the packet that was just? It, it, um, it's, it's in the paper packet, but it, it should also be online and oh, okay, towards okay. the end. Mm just situating ourselves here. No worries. We did receive just electronic versions of all the right correspondence, yeah. just so you know. There's gotcha. a supplementary. Gotcha. I think you can go ahead, George. <laughs> I'm sorry? You can go ahead okay. with your comment. Uh, that was the comment. It's just oh. referring to the, if you'd like me to read it. Yeah, if you would read okay. it. Yeah. Um, so from Avesta Housing, to quote them, the Hammerhead T turnaround was designed to accommodate snow plowing and maintain the functionality of a turnaround. For this reason, the original subdivision was barred from creating a driveway off the Hammerhead for the duplex home, lot six, units 18B and 18A located at the end of the subdivision and adjacent to 99 Depot Road. The on-site, well, the on-site conditions nor the design regulations have changed to make a driveway entrance off the Hammerhead turnaround functional. That's the best of comment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, if you have any further questions regarding some of the comments, these did, some did come in at the 
11th hour so I'd be happy to elaborate on those okay uh, yeah when we get to discussion on the council we'll let you know yes ma'am Hi, my name is Michelle McDermott. I live at 95 Depot Road, Gray, and um, I was the owner of that property, um, 99 Depot Road, back when the development was developed. And um, <clears throat> I and my husband, my ex-husband, my husband at the time, were at the planning meetings for that development. And during those planning meetings, we asked if we could, if they would leave us room on their road to have a driveway for our back lot. And the contractor said, sure. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, the, it was not a hammerhead, it was a cul-de-sac. And somewhere along the lines, it got changed from a cul-de-sac to a hammerhead. Unbeknownst to us, no one ever told us. We weren't asked to come in for another meeting. Nothing like that. It just was changed from a cul-de-sac to a hammerhead. Well, being a first-time home buyer, we didn't think anything of it. We weren't ready to develop the land. It, it didn't matter to us at the time. Fast forward 15 years and we get a divorce and we want to split the property. And we looked into putting a house on the back lot so we could each have a house. At that time, we were told that you can't put a driveway on a hammerhead. Now, it wasn't a hammerhead when it was originally developed. It was changed somewhere along the line, unbeknownst to us. And as you can see, at the end of Collier Brook Road, there's enough room for a driveway, which was requested by us. So that's just a little background. Um, I really feel like back in the day, it was when it was our property, the town did not do right by us. And now, you know, how many times has, has the property changed hands and not been able to be developed? Now they <coughs> took the chance, and they developed the property. I feel bad for them. I, I've been watching them do this the whole time. I'm like, how are you gonna get down there in the winter time? And, um, but you know, you've heard it all. But that's just a little bit of background. I don't know if any of you were here back then, on the council back then, the planning board back then, but it was not a hammerhead, it was a cul-de-sac. And that the reason that there is property on the road is because we asked for it. And somewhere in the night, it got changed and we, we were not apprised of it, so thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Actually, we'll pass these out first. This is uh, Eastfield Estates, right here in gray. Okay. Um, I'm not very organized in this, but that, no, there's a okay. subdivision plan. You're going to have to just kind of go back and forth. Thank you. There's a picture. Mm -hmm. And basically, I, I should probably just pass it on first. Yeah. Then I'll talk. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah. No one can hear you right now either, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. No, this is off of um, 
Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought you were still signing in. My apologies. Nobody's watching. Yeah, no, go right uh, ahead. So I'm Jason Manley. I live right here in Gray on Boulder Drive. Um, this is my son and his wife, daughter-in-law. Um, and I'm up here just to contradict uh, the town's statement that they've never given driveways off of a hammerhead. Um, this is a subdivision plan of Eastfield Estates, which I've actually built two houses in there myself. And um, the end of this is a hammerhead, and there are two driveways directly off of the hammerhead. Um, and that's what those pictures are showing you. I didn't take a picture of the second house, but the straight shot in, there also is another driveway off of the hammerhead in there. Um, I looked at the lot of the house that you're looking at right there, straight on with the porch. I actually looked to purchase that lot and build that home in there, but it had a, on the original subdivision plan, it was not allowed to have the driveway off of the hammerhead. There's a little note, if you look closely on that subdivision plan I just gave you that says pr proposed driveway entrance, that was actually approved on the drawing of this approved subdivision with the driveway there. Um, and clearly that is not where the driveway went in, it went in at the end of the hammerhead. Um, so that was my only point in my statement up here other than the driveway is very steep. We did the best we could. Yes, we did develop it. Um, there were young kids. We bought the lot for not very much money. We spent about three months in there doing earthwork for them to get it to the point that it's at now. Um, it's only a 60 foot wide access easement and we're cutting, we did a cut of about 35 feet deep out of the top of that. So you can picture 60 feet coming down at an angle, dropping 35 feet. The sidewalls are already at about a 45 degree angle. So it's, as Aaron was saying, it's not feasible to go any deeper. You just, clearly as you make a cone, <laughs> the lower you go, the narrower it gets. Um, so that's where we're at with that. And that's, it is a fairly treacherous driveway, especially in the winter. And they're, what Sam was trying to say, they want an access to get to the property so they can at least park the cars in there. There was no problem in the development when we did, we had a temporary construction entrance down there because we actually had to work backwards from there. So we actually entered, we put a culvert in there and did all of the construction work from the lower end coming through Collier Brook. Um, so that was there for approximately nine months and it, it caused no more damage, no more runoff, no more anything. There was actually standing water in that area where the driveway is being requested before we started. And then once we put a culvert in there and graded up around it, the water went away. Um, but at, when we got to the end of the job, we had to remove all of that and just leave the, the swale back in the way it was before. So I'm sure there's water standing there again now. Um, but the, that was being accessed that whole time that we constructed the property from Collier Brook and there were no issues. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the people, before all this happened, this, there's been a big battle in there because a lot of people were parking in the, the hammerhead before, not us, but before we got there, there were people parking in the hammerhead. And then once we started with the driveway there, it became a big thing and now there's no parking down there and whatever, but anyway, okay. that's. Yeah, um, just a point of information. I'm mm -hmm. not opening up for discussion right now. Um, what time of year was that temporary access you had for uh, the We went right through the winter. You were in the winter? Yep, yeah. went right through the winter. And there were no issues with the plows being in the way, and, and that's what Aaron was saying. They're not, we don't care if the towel comes in and pushes the snow in the driveway. <laughs> that's, that's fine. We can, we can move it out of the way. But at the, the problem is where the driveway is so steep coming down to depot, they don't even have the opportunity to even pull off the road and just walk in when it's super slippery. So there's nowhere they can't, it, it's, it's very difficult. So if they could at least get a driveway entrance in there and just park the cars down and walk up to the house where it's flat, that's, that's what they're after. Okay. And, and yes, the, 
it, it would be very difficult for a fire truck to get in there or an ambulance as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Sense. Yeah, I appreciate it. Anyone else have comments? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Kevin McDermott. I live at 95 Depot Road. My wife, Michelle, explained how our property adjoins the one in question. Um, the pictures of the driveway do not do it justice whatsoever. I've driven it a number of times in dry weather, and I call it going over the hump. And when you get near the top, you can see hood and sky, and that's it. For them to craft that driveway into anything remotely close to safely passable, they'd have to dig it out like the pit on Mail Road. And they're already right up against our property line and the guy at 101 Depot or whatever it is down the hill from their driveway. Um, the fire, a fireman, there was a wreck at the bottom of their driveway a while back. Some guy had a medical event, crashed into the pole at the base of their driveway. And my wife went up to the corner of our property that's looking way down on the road. And the fire guy's kind of looking around, hears a voice, and oh, he looks up. He said, where does this road go? And she said, well, that's a driveway. And he looked up and he said, I couldn't get anything up there. As far as the concern of keeping the snow cleared from any access at the Hammerhead, which is their property, their property abuts the Hammerhead. Um, if that, I was going to say kid, because he's younger than my kid, but <laughs> if that gentleman can keep his driveway remotely close to passable, which he can, I've sat on my deck just watching people make numerous attempts, you know, zoom back up. I think the one guy took about seven or eight tries to make it over the top in the winter. So if he can keep it that passable, I don't care what the town plow truck does at the end of Collier Brook Road. I think he can take care of it. And I think if people truly felt for this young couple, they would not really oppose this, because I really don't see it being any giant hindrance. We get a lot more noise and traffic on Depot Road, and that's our lot. That's our house. That's the way it is. I get it. Um, it's supposed to be no engine braking. We hear. Trucks Jake breaking down the hill all the time. One was so loud it was painful just two days ago. So that's my two cents. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, well, let, let me just make sure no one has first comments before you go back to second. Last call for first initial comments. I don't see anyone online. Okay, if you'd like to come up and have a second second shot at a comment. <laughs> so as I sit here tonight, I'm I'm kind of surprised at some of what's going on because it was sent to us that it was a variance for a driveway. Um, then it's not a variance, it's to renege on what... Um, the public works director approved, so we, we want to change whether he approves it or disapproves it. And I guess I just need some clarification. Um, you know, why did the town approve that being a buildable lot and a driveway in there if it now is just not safe? Those are, that is a question I think should have been asked before it was approved to build on that property. My second question is, what is, the, um, what is the distance of their property? And I'm totally screwing it up because <laughs> I don't do that. Um, but the driveway, what are they looking to put in there? And is it all on their land? 
And is it truly a driveway so that the emergency vehicles can get up there and they can get to their property and be safe? Or is it just a parking spot? Because some of those things make a big difference on whether it's something that we should go behind and actually support or disapprove. Um, and, you know, for me as a homeowner in there and having the culvert there and just everything within the development, in order for somebody to make an educated decision on this, I think we really need to know, is it a driveway? If it's going to be a driveway, what is it going to be? How wide is it? Does it infringe on the common land of Collier Brook? Or is it just on their property? And I guess that, you know, that's, I just need some clarification of what we're really looking to either approve or disapprove. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I'm sure those are questions we had also. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else looking to make a second comment? Um, I'm just going to go to Ms. Watson first. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Sorry, just to address some of those questions. Um, it would be all of our property. Um, in back of the house, there's nearly another acre and a half, two acres. Um, our property abuts the, the poor other two families that live in that, where the driveway goes all the way around, that really stinks too. Um, the whole situation is just kind of inconvenient for, very inconvenient. Um, so it would be all of our property. Um, we would not be intruding on anyone else's property. Um, the culvert system that we put in there, sorry, was requested by the town and um, we put that in as a draining system um, so it actually does improve the drainage and you know as Jason said to when the driveway was in there It actually did soak up a lot more of the drainage and I mean before we moved in there It was also everyone was still downhill, you know, it's, we didn't change anything, you know, so I actually think it's probably better if you have packed land there rather than grass that ends up kind of becoming a leach field um, and you know to the comments to uh, why would we put ourselves in this situation if we had more money we probably wouldn't have um so it wasn't our first pick of the litter but um we really 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 tried to make it work um and really in my what i'm requesting and what i would really hope that we can get to is a driveway that a fire truck could fit up <laughs> uh, we have 30 feet of land that touches the hammerhead and that's two vehicles could come in and out we don't even have to go that wide just wide enough so that a fire truck or ambulance could get to the back of my house um, is really what I'm most concerned about I mean if all we can get is a parking lot so that I can safely leave without nose diving into depot road I would also take that beggars can't be choosers but um, really what I would really really like is a safe access point for both me and for a fire truck or ambulance to be able to get to the back of our house because really we are surrounded by acres of tree line and then homes on the other side of that so it is a huge concern that i mean a fire truck could not get up our driveway there's no four wheel possible for that much weight i mean we can barely get a seven thousand pound skid steer up that driveway it's so steep so yeah thank you let me, this one, this woman in the back had a comment. Just, just as an aside, uh, I've been driving up the driveway going around the Hammerhead for 29 years. Back, I'm retired, obviously, I'm an old lady, but I used to dread snowstorms and having to drive home and going up that driveway. It's so steep. And I don't know how many times I got halfway up. And one time, my neighbor, a tiny little young lady, helped me push my car up the driveway. That's how steep it is. And it's, it was approved, and it's the one that was around the hammerhead. A couple times I had to park at the bottom, in, just get into the driveway. 
and wait, it was plowed. Mr. Wilkinson was a wonderful guy, did the plowing. Mr. Wilkinson, you know, everywhere in town and sanding, but I just couldn't, I just couldn't get up because the driveway has, talk about steep, and then there's its L shape. Oh, I love that L shape, where you have to slow down to go around the L shape. So I just want to tell you that no fire truck would be able to get up that driveway. Thank God there's a hammerhead at the bottom of our lot so that they'll be able to get a hose to our house, but there's no way. It, so you talk about steep and you talk about a uh, fire truck not being able to get to our, my house. Same thing, it's, but I've been dealing with, dealing with it for 29 years. The approved plans came up with this driveway. It was, it's doable, it's tough, but it's doable. I'm sorry that yours is not doable, but I'm using the word steep and fire truck not getting up. That's my life, and I've been living with it for 29 years. So, there you go, bye. Thank you. Sir, yeah. I just wanted to follow up on Mr. Manley's comments about building in the winter. They weren't building in the winter. And the only time that, that I know of the vehicles uh, being parked at the Hammerhead was when they parked there and got plowed in. This is what caused the whole uproar about them parking in that area. Um, as for the driveway, you know, their driveway, he's at fault. He developed it. If, if it's unsafe, then they shouldn't be in that home right now at all. It, it, they claim it's a safety concern. You can't get the fire department in there. You can't get the ambulance in there. So are they living in an unsafe occupancy right now? Um, in you know, building a temporary driveway, what's that gonna do for the ambulance? Are they gonna drive up through the grass? They, they mentioned temporary and they mentioned driveway with no plan. So, uh, an ambulance can't get up there, but their Mini Cooper could. So how does that work out? They had a Mini Cooper when I met them. It was two years ago. I don't know if they still have it, but you, you, we live in Maine. Everybody in Gray can come up to you and say, my driveway's unsafe, and we know all the steep hills in Gray. Um, I need to find other access. Access the neighbor's property. He, they sold them the property. I mean, they seem very concerned about this young couple, and they're right there on Depot Road. They've made it out onto Depot Road. So I just don't see why our neighborhood would change, but I'll go back to the town made an agreement with the Maine State Housing in Avesta that no driveway would be built there. So not only if you say they can do it, what's Avesta and Maine State Housing um, gonna say that you can go in and change a development in Grand access. So I, I, that's all I'm saying is they created the problem. They need to fix it. And fixing it isn't to disrupt our neighborhood. He says there isn't a change when they built it there, but that's not true. We've seen excess water in the last two years. Um, we've talked to the public works director about you know the, the water and the drainage, and our utilities are underwater. So on the ground, excuse me. So now if if they're clearing land up there and doing things and, and removing the vegetation, who's to say that those underground utilities aren't gonna be affected? I think they just need to fix their driveway. It's, it, I don't see why a whole neighborhood has to be disrupted because they decided to build a house on land that people refused, and, and if they're the sellers of the property, the, the permits, if I hope I get your name right, I'm not sure, then, they know that people have gone to buy that property and said, and were told, no, you can't have access to Collier Brook Road, and they passed on it. That's why the price of that property went down that lot. So I just don't see why our neighborhood would be affected by their poor choice of development. It, and they should have to fix their driveway. That's my comments. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that we did not sell that property. 
my wife's ex-husband got the property. He let it go for taxes. To that, I guess I should thank you, so thank you for that. Um, By what? The guy that bought it from him let it go for taxes. The guy that bought it from him died. And I think that's when these folks got it. Um, my main concern is just to be neighborly. You know, they say Maine is the way life should be. This is state number seven for me. And I got to say, I'm not always impressed. Do you have something else? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, this is really dragging out. It's becoming quite painful. Um, hmm. This will be my last retort, but I do just want to kind of correct something said. Um, just going back, um, we've had personal conflict since the minute we dug ground there. Um, kind of goes back, but we... <sighs> I don't, I don't even know where to begin. Um, so the driveway that we want to put in there, I mean, obviously it wouldn't be just grass. We would make a real driveway. Um, and no one wants to park in the hammerhead. It will not infringe on any turnarounds. It really impacts no one. So I don't know why it's become so personal. Um, and all of their utilities are underground. It's, their utilities are not on my property. You know, so that's underground at their property. It's not on my property. We can dig and it won't affect them. Um, and I mean, they lived at the bottom of a hill before I moved there. It's always been a drainage issue. There probably will always be a drainage issue. Their basements have flooded for the last 20 years. It's never had anything to do with me. Um, the covert we put in was supposed to remedy it and I do believe it has made an impact, a positive impact. Um, I am really sorry that your driveway is also bad. I don't know why that means that I should also deserve that fate. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's the driveway, I, it's unpassable by emergency vehicles. It's very unsafe. It's three times more steep than, I don't know. It just doesn't matter, but um, yeah, I just feel like uh, there's some confusion. Um, it is not going to be, a, what I'm requesting is not a temporary. I mean, we will only use it in the winter, like when it's necessary, but um, it's, we're not going to tear it out every year. I mean, it's going to be there for, if we get approved, it's just going to be there. It's not temporary. Um, and so that no matter what season, a ambulance or fire truck could get up there. Um, and it really, it shouldn't have any impact on anybody um, other than giving safe passage for us. So, yeah. Thank you. Any final thoughts from anyone? I don't see anything online. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing portion um, at 8, 11 p.m. <coughs> looking for a motion to review and act upon. I'm going to change, amend the language. Uh, if, who do we have? A, to review and act upon either overturning or upholding the decision of the public works director based on hindered snow plowing operation in chapter 401.4 and 401.4b. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. And just a point of information for folks that don't attend council meetings often, we have to have a motion on the floor before we can discuss an item. So that's why also um, we made a change to the motion because we don't know which way we're gonna decide yet. So that was something that we sh probably should have changed at the beginning, but I missed that one. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that, Dan. Um, so I just wanna state that uh, I, this is my third year on council. We've never had to hear of any kind of appeal related to driveways or most zoning, or zoning ordinances. Usually these things go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, but um, 
the way our ordinance is written because this was a direct um, a decision made by our public works director it comes directly to council so um, this is a little new to I think all of us here also so <laughs> we might have some discussions about process just as a heads up um, I did have some questions for Tim if you wouldn't mind coming to the podium just about is snow. This anything before I took over as interim director yeah, it's not about that. Yeah, it's about. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, maybe I'll come to George next. <laughs> so I understand um, it's very atypical, and from your understanding, we've never approved a driveway off a of hammerhead, Correct. mostly due to the snow removal concerns and also. Um, leaving turnarounds for buses and, and emergency vehicles and such. Um, if, if we did approve this driveway, and I'm not saying we will, if, if we did, um, is there, in your opinion, any space um, or concerns with pushing the snow onto their driveway? There's they no concern, but I don't see where it would benefit the fire department if we have eight feet of snow at the end of their driveway. That's not going to help them get a fire truck up that driveway. Yeah, I mean, it, I imagine it would be cleared, but uh, eventually. But um, just, uh, I have some personal experience with the town pushing snow onto private property, just in my family. Um, not this town, a different town. Um, would you need to seek any kind of easement from them to, to push the snow onto someone's personal property rather than leaving it in the hammerhead space of the public um, road? I mean, the town has, has a little bit of, of a variance there. I don't know exactly how far we have for right. a right of way. Yeah, that, that would, right. Yeah. That would be a question. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, all right. There's just some questions. I, did anyone else have questions for Tim while he's up here? No. Nope. No. Okay. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, George, would you would you mind coming up? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, so as I was looking over this um, hearing tonight and just doing some research on our ordinances, um, I noticed that in our zoning ordinance under section 402.7.5 under the back lot easement section that you, it's required that there's a 50 foot wide ac access point to back lots. Is that, am I reading that correctly? That is correct. Okay. It's the back lot access easement. It is to give lots that don't have the required road frontage a way to achieve road frontage for access and for dimensional standards. Okay, so if there's only a 30 foot access point of property on the hammerhead, that would, that, that would not meet those standards, is that That's correct? That's not necessarily correct. Okay. So the back lot access easement is a paper easement needing to be 50 feet wide. The actual, uh, once the driveway is on private property, okay. regarding its width and steepness, we have no say. Okay. So once it enters the private property past what's uh, dimensionally required in chapter uh, 400, the driveway can be built to whatever you want out of whatever you want, such as clay or any other substrate, substrate that the earth may have in it. Okay. So does that also speak to why this very steep driveway was allowed? Because we had That's no correct, because okay. we have no say. Okay. So uh, we can make recommendations, but we can't do anything other than that. Okay. And in regards to, um, like, if, if we approved this driveway off the hammerhead, um, people were commenting that we don't know what the plan is, but technically you're saying we don't, we don't technically require that in order to allow for a driveway to be built. Is that well, I was trying to keep this focused um, to the issue at hand because um, this can turn into somewhat of an onion. Um, yeah. <laughs> there are issues with not necessarily the fact that it's a town road, but that it is a town road in an approved planning board subdivision plan recorded in plan book and page number 
whatever's listed on Wayne Woods' plan. Sure. So that may require an amendment to approve subdivision. Got it. And there may be some other technical standards that go along with it. But what I was trying to do today was just concentrate on what's in front of us. There are a few other, um, you know, noteworthy pieces to this. As in, there was a um, request for access more than once, but one in writing from Norm uh, Sandin, and, and that was denied back in 2018. Yeah, um, I saw that. It was, that was the faxed um, request. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, now, also, um, to not be one-sided on it, Mr. Manley is 100% correct on the lot at the end of Eastfield on the right-hand side. That was prior to Tim Estes' um, tenure here. So I'm not sure if he's aware of it or not, but he is now. The, there is a driveway off the Hammerhead in that location, and I was involved with it with Alec Dodd. The reason that was approved is, A, the lot is part of the approved subdivision plan recorded. B, the driveway on the face of the subdivision plan was not in meets and bounds. It was a proposed driveway location, so it wasn't set in stone. When that was all done, there was a depression in the ground causing flooding onto an abutter's property. So the driveway, for several reasons, couldn't go there. One, Portland Water, uh, Gray Water District had run utilities in there. Two, CMP had run utilities in there. Three, the um, backup onto the neighbor's property was severe. And the uh, issue was I went down there with Alec and we made that, he, as the public works director, made that call with input. Uh, and I also believe the town engineer may have had some input on it as well. Okay. So, but he is correct. There's uh, one. All right. Yeah, that's helpful. I um, was going to ask about that also. Did anyone have a, a questions for George while he's up here? No? Okay. Thank you, George. Thank you. Um, so this is new to me. Dan, you kind of sit in on planning boards and, Mar and Marty too. Um, and you're liaison for ZBA. So I'm, I'm curious, what's what's the typical process for s stuff like this? It's, it's new to me. <laughs> well, a couple, of, if I can preface that. Yep. I, um, a lot of times, um, the reason for having the public hearing is to get all the information in one place mm -hmm. so that everybody hears it. And so they were all working with the same information. Um, we take a lot of efforts to write our ordinances, but no ordinance will ever entertain every possible scenario in every single permeation that you can come up with. There are always going to be exceptions to the rules. Um, it would be nice if that wasn't the case, but that's not practical. Um, and when the planning board m makes a ruling, they often have to make judgment calls on the ordinances, um, because not every single thing can be addressed um, through the ordinance. Um, but as far as the ultimate decision, it is the council's to decide um, whether to overrule this or not. Okay. Anyone want to share any thoughts or comments? Well, I, I mean, just, I mean, Public Works Director said, has said basically that allowing this would hinder his snow removal and um, his ability to do snow removal. Um, and I mean, it, it's, it's very, you know, I'm very torn about this. It's nothing, it's not like, oh, I know what to do. Um, um, but, but I also know I don't want to override town staff in a matter of, you know, what amounts to public safety, I guess. So I have, you know, I, I have, I, I want for this lot to be better, but I also don't want to compromise the operations of the town. Anyone else have any? Wasn't that helpful? Yeah, no, no. So it's good to hear your thought process. <laughs> Go ahead, Ann. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, I guess I may have a question after all for uh, maybe Tim. Uh, I, I just, um, so my, my question is, is it possible to, um, uh, or maybe I guess we've already addressed this question to you, is, is it possible to, to create a, at least a parking area um, uh, there that, uh, that the homeowners would maintain, perhaps with some sort of agreement with the town, written agreement? We can't spend them. Get the mic. You have to wait. Get to the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, can, we cannot spend public funds on private property. Sure, right, sure. So no, that I get would that. be a definite no. Right, so if the, um, if, but, I mean, I hear the homeowners saying that if, if that they would keep that, uh, whether it's a driveway or a parking area, they would, they, it would be there on them to clear it. They wouldn't, uh, you know, they wouldn't fuss about the, ten, about your snow plows blocking them in. Mm -hmm. Um, they would be their responsibility to clear it. We also need to stop and think is if we do it for one, we're going to end up doing it for everybody. Yeah. So. Although these are fairly unique circumstances, yeah. I hope. We but, have several uh, hammerheads throughout the town. Right? Yeah, sure, sure. But not all of them are in steep, you know, have steep driveway issues on either end. Uh, I mean, I'm, I am sort of sympathetic to this. For one thing, I, I live on a 700-foot driveway of which uh, about 400 feet is pretty steep. Um, the lucky thing for me is that, uh, and my husband is that, uh, you know, the, the the 300 feet that that isn't steep um, is at the bottom of the driveway coming out to North Raymond Road. So uh, that has saved our necks on more than one occasion as we've slid down the hill. And and uh, and I I I mean I am concerned about the family's safety. I think that's a real issue. I mean I I think there's uh, you know, real question as to why uh, the, the house was approved up there in the first place without better access. I, I mean, I understand that it's not in the town's ordinance to approve the, the driveways, but I mean, I, I, I have a hazy recollection of going through the, the site review process myself with, with our house, and it seemed like the town did have some, uh, some, you know, did weigh in on the driveway, at least on the, um, you know, perhaps just where it, it met North Raymond Road, but uh, I, I know, I, I don't know, this seems like a pretty tough spot for this family to be in because they have invested money and uh, have apparently made a good faith effort to resolve the issue so they can exit safely on the North, uh, depot road and, and have been unable to do so. So I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to, um, you know, I, I, I they, they bought, they're not asking to have 365 day access through Collier Brook, but simply in the, the winter months when it's icy and, and snowy and, and their kids, to keep themselves and their kids, um, you know, away from some risk. Um, I guess, uh, I, w I would ask you, Tim, is, is, would overruling you compromise public safety? Would it, and, and would it, um, and make your make your job more difficult. I, um, I've over I've uh, and I don't remember either one or two driveways that they requested off Hammerheads uh, that I have denied so so far since mm -hmm. I've been public works director. So if we if we let this one happen, we're going to have to let it happen with all of them. A, a point of information that's not accurate. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We have leeway. Right. So it's not accurate to say that it, there's there's absolutely right. If we do it for one, we have to do it for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Each exception has to be justified. There has to be a reason for it. Mm -hmm. And planning board makes these decisions all the time. Okay. And, and and for my part, I guess the only you know or a big reason why I wouldn't you know why I would support your decision would be if if overriding it would compromise public safety or. Or, or town operations. I can't tell you that. I really don't know. Okay. Just in, in regards to public safety, safety, we do we do have a submission from Chief Elkanick, right? Um, noting that he he went out and looked at both the current driveway and the space off Collier Brook Road, um, and did find that it would be much safer and more accessible for emergency vehicles, especially in the winter, um, to access that property off of Collier Brook. And you know, I want their their family safe. Sure. Just yeah. don't don't get me wrong. Nope. Yeah. It's just we've that's we've never accepted that mm -hmm. off off a of hammerhead. 
no one doubts that you're concerned about people's safety. Yeah, no, and definitely. it's your role to um, basically implement the town's ordinances as best you understand them. And I think you do a really good job of that. Right, yeah, um, agreed. In my mind, the, the reason we're here to me tonight questioning your decision speaks to a failure to some extent in our process, that something mm -hmm. has broken down along the way. And here we are in this conundrum that we have to figure out how to untie. So this doesn't reflect negatively on you, whichever way the decision goes in any way in yeah, my mind. Absolutely. And I think it's really important for you to hear that. And it's really important for everybody that's listening to understand that too. Um, I won't vote to override your decision tonight based on the information that I have now. Um, that doesn't mean that I wouldn't, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not prepared to do it on uh, Plan that's not on paper, that's not engineered, that's not proving to me that we're going to solve this problem once and for all. Um, so I would need more information before I would overrule Tim's um, decision on this. Um, it is a 60 foot right of way, I believe. Is that correct? Is what you have there? Um, I've driven, I drove out there today. I went up your drive and down the other side. I went around to call your Brook Road. Um, I met a cement truck on Depot Road as I was going down your driveway to get out onto Depot Road. Um, there is no place, there is no landing off of Depot Road uh, onto this driveway, so there isn't a safe spot to either end up or to start. Um, I think we need to have a discussion about the design of this driveway and the building permit process, but I think that that's a separate discussion from this one um, because I think the process did break down in this case, and processes do. Again, that's not a criticism of anyone in particular. Um, it just means that we've got to sharpen our pencil and try and make sure that this particular set of circumstances doesn't happen again. Um, I think that I'm not convinced your driveway can't be fixed. Um, it would be an expense, there's no doubt about it. Um, it would require, like I said, some engineering. Um, I don't know how much more expensive or less expensive that would be, putting a new driveway in down to Collier Brook. Um, you've got to be a good 30 feet above Collier Brook. You've got to be a good 40 feet from the top of your driveway down to the house anyways and you must be a 30 feet off Depot Road at the, at the high point of your driveway. Um, so, you know, I think there's a solution in here. Um, I think we've heard some ideas tonight that, that might make it workable, but I, I, need a, I need a set of plans that I can look at and something that, you know, our code enforcement officer can go out and make sure it's been implemented the way it's supposed to be implemented and that we're all on the same page um, before I would take it any further. So that's kind of where I'm at tonight. Um, I, I, I guess I, I question, you know, whether we have a role in, in implementing, you know, in, in reviewing driveway design. It, it seems to me the way it was presented was we either override the public works director or not. And then if we do override the public works director, then they have to go through and deal with, you know, the subdivision ordinance and, and the code office for the, for the design of their driveway. So I'm, I, I question whether or not we would actually legitimately have a role in reviewing a driveway design as, as a council. I don't propose to, to engineer or to someone, someone else who has those skills would do that. Um, yeah. 400.5.4.c.2 talks specifically about driveways. Um, this driveway was not built according to that ordinance. We have updated the ordinances, so I don't know whether this was update happened before or after your driveway um, was built, um, but you wouldn't be able to build your driveway today the way it looks now un under this ordinance. Um, so that's a, a question I do have. 
Um, we have guidelines about runoff onto the street. We have guidelines about the driveway is supposed to slope away from the street. Um, again, I don't know the timing of all this, so maybe that's news since you folks built. But um, I, I don't have really anything to add other than um, we've had a lot of suggestions and a lot of ideas presented to us tonight, but I don't feel any of, any of them are formed well enough for me to make a decision. So I would have to be a no as far as overruling Tim's decision. Yeah, I just want to say I also uh, took a drive out that way today, and, and your driveway is very steep. I, I certainly empathize <laughs> with you driving up that. Um, that said, there's a lot of really steep driveways being built in gray lately. Um, if you take a drive um, out 115 towards Wyndham, there's some driveways that look like they're built on a ledge, and I, I don't know how people get up them. <laughs> um, and, and I also have small children, and I, I, I certainly empathize with the safety issues that the chief has presented and you've presented. Um, but I think the residents of Collier Brook Road also have a lot of concerns, and they um, have properties in a subdivision that was approved the way it is. Um, so I, I think I'm, I'm sort of leaning the same way Dan is, that I... I would like to see more firm plans and an understanding of the impacts on Collier Brook Road. Um, I think right now it's very uh, aspirational that uh, the driveway you're attempt yeah, that you might attempt to build on Collier Brook Road, but it's not, there's no firm plans that we can look at and say this is going to work for everybody. Um, so that's that's the difficulty I'm, yeah. I'm facing here. Um, I think I would encourage you if. You know, depending on how the vote goes this evening, um, to you know certainly continue to work with the town and um, you know share your plans and and go through the process. And I think Dan's right that we need to take a look at our ordinances and, and our processes also. Is anyone, Marty? Did you have some comments? I tend to favor the the, uh, the response from the fire chief that uh, uh, that safety is important. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just sort of uh, confused, a little confused about scope and sequence here. I mean, are, are we at the outset, um, we, we were kind of told that you know, our focus is on just whether or not to overturn the, um, you know, the public works director's decision, and, but I, I, I feel like we can't do that and because we don't have a plan to look at. I mean, that's kind of what was a little bit your point, or, or am yeah, I? No, we can, we can. Well, I mean, I, yes, I know we can technically, but I mean, but I don't feel as as inclined to do that until until I've seen a plan. I mean, that's sort of I've been struggling with that as well. I mean, I'm I'm certainly concerned about the family yeah. safety, and yeah. and I would like to uh, see, you know, uh, the town continuing to work with you to come up with a solution. But um, it's it's hard, you know. I'm not an, an engineer, and, uh, <coughs> and I, I can't help you with the design of the driveway. I, I wasn't able to make it out there today to look at it, so um, I I don't I can't speak to whether or not it's possible to, to create some sort of landing at the bottom that makes it safer. It, it it sounds I mean I've certainly there are driveways on my road I live on North Raymond Road that come straight down a hill a steep hill to the to the um, okay. road and it's you know that's scary, um, so. Uh, I, I, that's what I'm sort of asking about scope and sequence here, in a way. I mean, just like, I, I, I don't feel like I'm ready to approve this until I've seen plans, but we've also been told that we can't ask, we're not supposed to ask for plans, we're just supposed to rule in the decision. I mean, my understanding of the process, and George, please correct me if I'm wrong, I think, I think what we would be overruling the public works decision if we, if we chose to do that tonight, and then there would have to go through a planning process um, to resubmit through the planning board because there's a subdivision no, change. No, no, is that, I, I don't know if it would in fact if it would affect it, it. It could affect subdivision. There's nothing in the information that I've seen from Avesta that prevents that from being discussed. Um, so whether it would have to go to planning board, I can't. I can't say. Um, and so that to if I confuse things, I apologize. I think we're on the same page. I don't feel like I have enough information to overrule Tim's decision right now. Um, 
what I guess I'm trying to say is if you present a plan, it, you know, one, I'm not 100% convinced you can't fix your driveway, but maybe you can. But if you present a, another plan that's viable and you have all the, the details and stuff, then that would be, an, a, you know, be willing to have another discussion about it, I guess is what I'm saying. I mean, we have the authority to certainly table. Yeah, yeah you could, yeah, but then it's, but there's then, no certainty that they'd ever come back with another plan. Right. So, from a process standpoint, my, my thought process is, I'll vote this down tonight and we may see these people back again with the other plan. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. What? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, well, the public hearing portion is closed, but um, I would like to hear from you whether or not you'd be interested in submitting a plan in the future. So if you wouldn't mind coming up just to answer that, that question. Sorry, thank you. Um, I didn't know that we were at the phase yet of having a plan, but we could get a plan going quickly. We, we can have a plan. For sure, okay. like working together for a plan that works for everybody. You know, as we said, my my father-in-law made a driveway out of like a mountain. So like this driveway, it would be like lightweight compared to what we've done. Um, and it is like, I mean, we really fixing our driveway would um, it would entail either land being purchased from either neighbor, because um, currently we just, we don't own any more land to the left or right. So to dig down would only make it so that it's only passable by one car at a time. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not an engineer, I don't play one on TV. Um, I, either you can, you know, there's a lot of work that you can do with retaining walls. I'm not trying to suggest a solution for you, but all I'm saying is with the information that I have now, I'm not prepared to overrule Tim's decision. Well, if and given if you can the work out something with your neighbors and come back to us where there's, uh, you know, where everybody's on the same page, yeah, so much the better. Well, given the opportunity to present a plan, I'd be happy to do that. I didn't know we were at that phase yet. No, no, no. no. We're, I mean, this, I, like I said at the beginning, yeah. this process Uncharted is territory. new to yeah. us, also. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, d we can, you know, just say the word, we'll get a plan. But you know, we'll, I'll just, I'll look, turn it back. All right. Can I just 10 seconds? I mean, um, it's not that I'd be or anything like that. I just want to understand. Well, just Point one second. Um, I, I really would like to not open this up to public comment. It was more of a direct question to her. So well, is it's it. Well, it's going to She's going to do something. There's covenants and restrictions. Okay, That's well, maybe I'm could I ask about. Could I ask you speak with her after this process is no, over? I'll yeah, just yeah. Let you know the okay, answer. no, I appreciate okay. it. Um, okay, is everyone. Ready to vote, or do we want to tape? What, what's the? I'm just gonna get a straw poll here of people's. I'm ready to vote. You ready to vote? I'm ready to vote. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ready. All right. So I, I, I make a motion that we uphold the uh, public works director's decision. Do we need a second motion? Yeah. Okay. To amend the motion. Yep. So, Ann, you made the original motion, and Marty, um, second. you second it. Are you okay with Matthew's amendment to yes. uphold? Yes. So, so just Do a point of information, it's, it's in the positive now. So To uphold the public works director's okay. base, um, decision based on hindered snow plowing operation. Right? Yep, I yep. just don't want there to yep. be any confusion. It's All right. no Do we have a, a no vote. <laughs> Do yeah. we have a second to Matthew's um, motion? Yes. Okay, I'll go to vote. Matthew? We're vote just to clarify, I'll read the motion again. We are uh, my vote is yes. <laughs> uh, voting to uphold the decision of the public works director public works director based on hindered snow plowing operation and chapters four hundred dot one dot four and chapters four hundred dot one dot four B. Yes. Yes. Marty? No. Dan? Yes. Ann? Yes, but. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I'm also a yes. So um, we are uh, voting to uphold the Public Works Director's um, decision. I would just highly encourage you to keep in touch with the town and maybe come back to us um, with some more solid plans and we will um, review our processes and um, figure out what the most appropriate way for you to represent any plans that you come up with is to the appropriate body. I'm not sure it would be this one, um, but we would have to consult with our code enforcement staff. Um, I know this is these things are tricky and I certainly empathize with everybody in the room, so I appreciate all of you coming out and Definitely. speaking. Okay. Pro problems aren't always solved the first time we try. Yeah. But they're often solved if we keep trying. It's our, I know. It's their first time down this road. So it now being 7.30. 8.40? No, it's on there for 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. I can't assume. Um, I'm just, just for people watching, I'm just going to give uh, folks a minute to exit um, while we wait here. Do you need a recess? No, no, no. no. Just wait and watch it and wonder why we're just sitting here smiling. And by the way, it's not quarter to ten, just in case. No, yeah. I know. <laughs> I looked at that clock a couple times. I made a point for saying that. I made a point before the meeting. Wait a minute. How did I, I, know. <laughs> I almost said something out loud because if something turned around, they'd go. Yeah. I mean, it's just, on my laptop directly, but I, I am. Uh, Yeah. Let's touch these before we're done. Yeah. Because I, I do think it's a safety issue. So. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Um, That's all right. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. And then there was Mo. Right. I know. Oh, sorry for the same thing. I know. Yeah, we need to, this was exciting for us to have people watching our meeting. We, first of action. Yeah. Just room for, always room for improvement. Yes. Okay. Um, I think. Good night, George. Good night. Yeah. Yes, thank you. You too. Um, Marty. Oh, he's coming back. I'll just wait for Marty. There shouldn't be anything labeled 400.5.4.c.1. I mean, that alone tells you <laughs> that there's a problem. <laughs> okay, um, everyone's exited the room, so we'll resume um, with our action items. Okay. Um, looking for a motion to review and act upon ending the moratorium on self storage developments currently scheduled to expire on December 27, 2023. And just to clarify, the motion would read. The town of Gray hereby ordains that the moratorium on self-storage developments is ended effective Monday, November 20th, 2023. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Does anyone have any thoughts or comments that they'd like to share? Um, I'm just a point, just a point of clarity. We did um, enact, um, I think it was our last meeting, mid-October. Yes. Um, to change, we did enact changes to the self uh, the zoning ordinance um, that affects self storage developments and also their design standards. So those should go into effect, I believe, 30 days from when we adopted that language. And this moratorium thereby um, is ending shortly thereafter, so that um, people can continue on their way developing self storage facilities if they so choose. Um, Question? Yep. Yeah. Um, so this one's been assigned to me in our in our team's list of council tasks. Oh. So m what I'm looking for is when is it closed? Is it closed when we vote or is it closed when it it becomes uh, enacted? Um, I would say when the law is effective. Uh, so then it, oh, I well, would, I guess technically, well, so, so the law is effective, I think, November 17th. Yeah. Um, but then the moratorium will not end until the 20th. I didn't get clarity around from Kristen about why there's that three day, you know, three day gap there. But um, I think it had something to do with the weekend or something. Yeah. Um, 
my question was about closing the task to right. do the ordinance. So I mean, I I would advocate for closing the task as soon as the council business is done, which would be the conclusion of the yeah, vote. Yeah, I agree. Unless right. someone okay. raises yeah. the issue, because there's no more yeah. action to take. You're not going to do anything between now and the. Closure. I mean, honestly, these these that's just like a housekeeping thing for our keeping track of our workload. So it's not. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't disagree. We yeah. should all do it the same way. And yeah, I just yeah. Wasn't I, sure I get what, what you're saying. People's preference. Was. I understand. Yeah, I think you can close it as soon as we're done looking at it. Okay. I will do that. Oh boy! Yeah, gotta vote first. Yeah, you get the first. No, this is for. That was for the. What I'm responsible for is for the ordinance. This is for the moratorium. Moratorium. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone have any comments related to ending the moratorium? Mm -mm. No. Okay. I'll go to vote. Uh, Matthew. Yes. Uh, Marty. Yes. Dan. Yes. Anne. Yes. And I'm also a yes. Okay. Um, next up are some bids. Um, number two, to review and act upon approving a bid award for the lease of a crossover electric vehicle for the Code Enforcement Department. Looking <coughs> for a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you, Mo, for coming up. If you could just state your name and position so people can hear, uh, know who you are. <laughs> Good evening, Mo Russo, Director of Buildings and Grounds for the Town of Gray. Yeah. Uh, so we put out to bid the um, plug-in hybrid, which was proposed during the budget process. Um, plug-in hybrid due to the fact that the town has installed um, charge point charging stations for electric vehicles as part of it, as well as the reliability between a hybrid versus a full electric at this point. Um, so we put it out to bid and we received uh, three bids um, that are listed there, uh, Central Main Toyota, Lee Toyota, and Ira Toyota. Um, we went with this plug-in hybrid because it is potentially eligible for an efficiency main rebate. Uh, we won't know if we will be receiving that rebate um, until we move forward with who we award the purchase to. Um, so we received three bids. Um, the low bid was for a 2024 model um, at $43,782 from Lee Toyota. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, that vehicle is scheduled to arrive there uh, late December. So it's a would be a in-stock vehicle at that point. And just to clarify, this um, we have the full amount here on the motion, um, but it's a it would be a leased vehicle, right? So our payment due this year would not be this full amount. Is that correct? So my understanding, based upon what figures were uh, provided uh, from the former town manager through Andrew Scott and Bank, is that the lease would be through Andrew Scott and Bank for three years. The um, lease paperwork that we had um, had drawn up in July um, would be a payment in for this fiscal year of fifteen thousand one hundred sixty nine dollars. That was at a five point nine five percent rate uh, for three years with a one dollar buyout afterwards. Um, five point five nine percent. You said five point nine five. Oh, five point nine five percent with a one dollar buyout at the end. That's correct. And in this year's fiscal budget for capital improvement for vehicle purchases, there was $16,500 allotted. Right. I remember we uh, had a little buffer on there for fees and things. Um, okay. Did you have something, Josh? I did yeah. just want to point out um, a couple things. Is that, A, due to one of my errors, actually, in the motion, we have the price with the rebate included at $41,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that needs to be adjusted when we make the motion to the 43782 Yeah, I caught and that. Also, yeah. um, and also, Interscoggin Bank, that was based on a July 1 delivery date from Interscoggin, but due to the budget not passing, that term has expired. Interscoggin is ready to do business again, but I could not get the lease term. I could not get the exact terms of the lease until we were able to say how many years we wanted on it. Okay. So that will be forthcoming after this decision to move. Okay, but it would be based on this total purchase price. Yes. Yes. Not, it wouldn't be some other amount. Uh, it, I, sorry, if I may, the original budgeted amount was forty-three thousand dollars. Okay. But then we amended it to be a p lease payment. Correct, right? and the, the, yeah. the lease um, documents that we have had drawn up were at $43,000 for that vehicle. Okay. Dan, you had a comment? It's just a question. So I, I thought that we had, I thought that Andrew Scoggin had agreed to hold that price for us. Hmm. 
was was my understanding. I was made to understand by Andrew Scroggin that it expired on, I believe, July 30th. I can get the exact date. I think they, help, they did hold our rate for the bond. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. But I don't recall yeah. them holding anything for the Could lease, be, I'm conflating the two. Yeah. yeah. So do we know what the new rate will be? Sadly, I do not. So how can we vote to lease the vehicle if we don't know what the lease is going to be? Well, I think we can vote on the full purchase price. To not to ex... Because... So the lease wouldn't be this... The way we've worded the motion is that we're leasing it with the with the full purchase price of four. Although it does say not to exceed. Yeah. And that's not coming out of this year's budget. That's We're not taking the 43000 out of this year's budget. I mean, we could pass a, we could say tonight not to exceed whatever that budgeted amount is. Yeah, we do have a budgeted amount at 16.5. But I don't know if that's going to be enough to, be? I mean, what happens if it comes back and it's more than that? Then what we could also do is extend the lease if that option came back to lower the annual cost of it. If we went up to a four-year lease rather than a three-year lease, I think that would then keep the overall price the same with an emergent. Right, yeah. Typically, it would make it more expensive because it, you're paying interest be. for another year. Yeah. We'd have the tow cost, yeah. You know, I, I mean, if they'll give you a four-year four lease for the... I mean, I, I guess I would... I mean, would it be a problem if we approved it for the budgeted amount for this year and if it wasn't enough... We would have to would come back and revisit it. Where would the money come from? Because we, we can't decide that. I mean, it would have to come out of some contingency or another. Yeah. Well, could we? I mean, if if we think we may end up with a in a contingency situation, I wonder if the you know our motion could just include that statement. I mean, is that going too far at this point that we approve it? Uh, for a, 40, a purchase of 43,782, uh, you know, with a three-year term, and if there, if that amount, the, the first-year amount exceeds what we had budgeted, then it'll be taken from. I don't know what the public works does. Does a building and ground have a contingency? Yeah, yeah. but I you wouldn't do. take it yeah, from that. You wouldn't get me to. I don't think agree to take it from that. Where would you take it from? I don't think I would, but um, because it's capital, it's a capital expense. I don't, we don't have. Well, we had, well, we, uh, we had moved money yeah, based on I'm lawyer record. So the reserve for buildings and grounds used to be in our capital budget, but I think we had to move it based on our lawyers' recommendations with the motions we made at town meeting. Yeah. Is that right? And if I may, yeah, this, go ahead, Mo. this isn't a buildings and ground vehicle. <laughs> yeah. It only yeah. just gets, I just did this because this needs to move forward because our ACO does not have a vehicle. Right, that's a good point. And yeah. this was a three-part move. Yeah. And it needed to be started, so that's why I. You took the ball and ran with it. Yeah. Yeah. And we thank you for that. Yeah, we do. We could table it. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything, right? Well, I think we might lose the, the prices that we've secured. Is that and this is only based upon a, so this was just a stock vehicle and so it's based upon that vehicle being available still so right so if, if we don't vehicle, move on it they would potentially they would lose that stock and we wouldn't be able to purchase that vehicle that's correct it. yeah and I'm, at that point if i may at that point the next um one of the other dealers did have multiple vehicles arriving in december but it was at a higher price yeah okay so i mean i think we could just say that amend the motion to not to exceed the well we have a budgeted amount for a lease payment of 16,500 so well could, I mean couldn't we I mean that's a over that's over a thousand dollars more than what the current budgeted payment yeah. would be I mean, and I think if if yeah depending on yeah because we didn't sorry let me if you don't mind me thinking no go that. ahead yeah it, it, because we are talking about what we have budgeted, which is the payment amount, yeah. if it does require us to go from a three to a four year lease in order to stay within that amount of money, 
that's not a problem because that will be those will be budget questions for future years. So I guess I'm saying how would it we would approve it not to exceed the sixteen five, and then Josh would have the leeway to maybe make it a four four year term in order to keep it within that. Yeah, period. I see what you're saying, um, but. In, in technically all those payments, FY25 and beyond, haven't been approved. So right. you're, you're so saying we would, would just, yeah, we would just have to continue, which we were going to have to do anyway. Yeah, yeah, that would be that's my thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, we, but I, I guess I don't understand why we couldn't just approve the motion as it is, only with forty three thousand seven hundred eighty two. Because that's not what we have budgeted. Yeah, so this year we don't have a, the full purchase price budget. We only have a lease payment budget. Right, yeah. We just have one year of the lease budget. Okay. Yeah. There, um, look, there's also a discussion, too, that may, if I remember it right, is that there was a some wiggle room on the starting date of the first payment that does not necessarily do with the sign of the money coming in, so I forgot what the window on that was. So there is a possibility that if we approve this, the first payment could not be due until FY25. Meaning that it would oh. still fall again. I could. What I would like to do is, I think if you say sixteen five uh, forty three seven eighty two total, you can make it work. Then I can, or in, or if not, I can get as close as I possibly can and come back to you in the first one of December and say, here's extra five hundred dollars I need to get over the finish line for whatever that may be, mm -hmm. and then that mm -hmm. would get the bank rate locked in, all the information up front, and the yep. process moving. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I think I, I want to give you the flexibility yeah. to get the purchase done. So yeah. I, that. Yeah, that works for me. You can Delaying use the manager's contingency. Lower. No, no anything, it's only going to make it more expensive. We've learned that already. Yes. That just gets more expensive. So yeah. Which amendment? Yeah, so we need to amend the motion to accept the bid lease um, of a RAV4 Prime plug-in hybrid from Lee Toyota um, in a lease payment amount not to exceed $16,500 and for, uh, total purchase price of $43,782. That and, might work. And then, so that was Matthew, that would be you and, and Marty. Yes. I, I, I'm in favor of that amendment. Or I would propose that amendment if that's what I need to do. <laughs> okay. All right, does that make sense to everyone? Yep. So I'm, yes. I, I just read it. Do you want me to read it again? Nope. No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's vote then. Um, Matthew? Yes. Marty? Yes. Dan? Yes. Anne? Yes. And I'm also a yes. One more to go. But okay. thank you for that one. Well, yeah. yeah, well, the next one will be easier because now we know what we want to do. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm looking. Although, do we know what the lease, sorry, before I do amend the motion, do you, do you know what the lease payment was that we budgeted for the truck? So the budgeted amount for the truck was 16500 as well? That's what I thought. Okay. The uh, documents that Andrew Scoggin had provided, um, their payment was $14,816.50 for three-year lease with a $1 buyout at 5.95%. But that has since expired, Josh. Right. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully we can get something similar. And these, both these vehicles, are we the, both the... Bids came in higher than we had budgeted, right, Bridges? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe we we'll get a rebate. <laughs> yeah. So could I take a crack at a motion? Uh, or, yeah, or sure. We don't have a motion. Well, right the, now. well, you just you make sure you include the total purchase price of uh, fifty-two thousand. I, or I can do it, or you want to do it. Go ahead. Fifty. All right. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to approve. Um, or for the Great Town Council to accept the bid to lease a Ford F-150 hybrid from Casco Bay Ford in a lease payment amount not to exceed $16,500 for a total purchase price of $52,855. So, second. I'm impressed at the price difference between those two. Yeah. Especially one's a, a year older model, too. So, um, well, trucks are just generally more Yeah, expensive. so the uh, one from Row Auburn is, um, was a in-stock vehicle, so it's sitting on the lot, and they said if it was available and they were the low bid, it would be ready for us to pick up. Uh, Casco Bay Ford is doing the, um, it's an ordered vehicle, so yeah. it actually exceeded some of our bid specifications. Um, it comes in the silver color instead of what Row offered in white, um, and 
the last time we purchased trucks, Casco Bay Ford was the bidder that the town awarded the three pickup trucks to. So um, we've had a relationship with them that's worked. Okay. It's, it certainly worked here. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, does that wait, does the wait time affect your, you know, efficiencies significantly or? At this point, I mean, it's yeah. it's not $10,000 worth, you know, it's. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, we were expecting some sort of a wait regardless. And 12 to 15 weeks is far better than it was the last time. It was six months trucks. before. Yeah. 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 So right. it's, yes, it, okay. it works. Especially, Especially for a hybrid truck. I know those are harder to come by than the, yeah. the diesel. The diesel could, electric. could you just address, because I, I had I, I had a question to this effect. I mean, why why does is the town buying a new vehicle rather than looking for a used vehicle that would that possibly save money that way? Could you just address that? So it is uh, my understanding that has always been the practice of the town of Gray to purchase new vehicles is to not increase the maintenance cost year over year of repairing used vehicles. Um, that is my understanding through um, Steve Lavalle as public works director, um, Kurt Elkanik as the fire chief, that the town of Gray has always made it the practice that we buy new vehicles so that we can get the longest life out of them without increased yearly cost and maintenance yeah because mm -hmm. there's some cost involved in you know going out to bid and reviewing bids and and uh and replacing vehicles right um they become hand-me-downs too yeah yeah, yeah. I, they get used a lot i mean they, yeah. they have a long life in this town yeah so i just i thank you for that i was just uh i wasn't challenging you i just had had that question i just wanted to get it out there well also um buying new allows us to lease a vehicle mm -hmm. where and we can spread the payments out rather than putting the bill all at once yeah Vote. Okay. There was also a keen desire on the part of the council to get the electric or hybrid vehicles, which that wasn't your desire. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. Speaky as the whole. But the I body, the body I, of the council did decide. Yeah, I, think I said it accurately. <laughs> um, is. Yeah, no, no, I'm just, I'm just teasing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so Matthew, how do you vote? Yes. Marty. Yes. Dan. Yes. And yes. And I'm also yes. Thank you very much, Mo. Yes. Thank you, thank you for your patience. Thank, thank you for, for staying. Staying. with us. Sorry. Have a good evening. You thank too. You. And it's not five minutes past ten. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, so we amended the agenda to um, remove. Withdraw. Number item action what it was currently action item number four so I'm going to move up action item number five to four yep. and I'm looking for a motion to um, for the Gray Town Council to appoint Shalene Shevchenko as a regular member of the Resiliency Committee with a term expiring on August 31st, 2026. So move. Second. Um, yeah, I want to thank Shalene. I know the Resiliency Committee was lacking a quorum for quite a while, and there's some pending work that's important, so it would be great to have some new members. Good and, night, and Shalene um, is an experienced committee volunteer. She's previously been on the Community Economic Development Committee um, and is, I believe, serving on the Brownfields Committee. So Yes, she's serving on Brownfields. Yep. Um, anyone else have any? I just want to th also thank Shalene. Yes, thank her for stepping up. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yep. Anyone else have comments? Just, uh, I hope it's not going to be a deal breaker, but she will not get a Town of Gray email account, as it yes. says on Yes, the we do need to amend our app. We right. need to that is Josh, a process. Yeah, Josh yeah. and I have been uh, talking um, about that. And I also <laughs> think we should make another change on that. Um, further up, they're not numbered, but it, the question is, are you familiar with the comprehensive plan adopted by the Town of Gray? And I would like people to be more than just familiar. I think we need to change that to have you read comprehensive plan or at least the executive summary okay if i may interject really quickly yeah. just uh to bring up the point that since the emails was brought up if the council does wish for committee members to have an email it is very easy to have it that there is just a budgetary implication yeah, yeah. so if Which there is, is why we don't do it. I, of course yeah. of course but just as it is kind of a thing that keeps on buzzing around yeah we did talk yeah. about it during the last budget cycle right. um and you know it, it, there is a 
fairly significant significant expense to uh, maintaining individual email accounts for the yep. town, so we decided not to. Yeah, it was $120 a year, if I yep. remember correctly, per account. Mm -hmm. And I think we decided that we would do it for the council's planning board and ZBA mm -hmm. because they're quasi-judicial. Yes, that's right. There's a FOIA record-keeping component to that that I think doesn't exist for the other committee. So that was kind of why we came up with that for a, a, a break point. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go to vote. Ann? Yes. Dan? Yes. Marty? Yes. Matthew? Yes. And I'm also a yes. I'm just looking for a motion to appoint Zhenya Shevchenko as a regular member of the planning board with a term expiring on August 31st, 2026. Second. And I also want to thank Zhenya. He was a former committee member on what was the recycling committee before it became the resiliency committee. Um, and I know that he has a lot of experience working in um, zoning in his pr profession. So I think he'll be a really good fit. Yeah, um, no, I was, I was thrilled to see this application in the pile. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The planning board will be thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyone else comments? Go to vote, Matthew? Yes. Marty? Yes. Dan? Yes. Ann? Yes. And I'm also a yes. Okay. And what is now number six, I'm looking for a motion for the Greytown Council to appoint Chelsea Roy as a regular member of the Resiliency Committee with a term expiring August 31st, 2026. So moved. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, same goes for Chelsea, and like I said earlier, the Resiliency Committee could definitely use some members and some um, fresh thoughts and opinions. So I'm happy to have her join the committee and thank her for offering her services. Does this give them a quorum now? Oh, yeah. I believe they Good. have four. Awesome. I think more than, four, more than a quorum. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Matthew? Yes. Marty? Yes. Dan? Yes. Anne? Yes. And I'm also yes. Next up is the report from the council chair, and I will just apologize in advance because I have quite a few things here. Um, first, I just want to thank all of you and staff for um, being flexible with rescheduling our November workshops, um, just due to um, process um, error and also um, some com conflicts that came up for the original dates we had scheduled. So we are having a workshop this Thursday to talk about personnel policy changes that um, John needed to address. And then we will also be having a workshop on November 28th to discuss the open space subdivision um, ordinance amendments related to LD 2003. Both of those will begin at 5.30. And I know that you're unable to make the one on the 28th, but I think um, the conversation um, is important to move forward. So we're gonna, if you're okay with it, we're gonna move forward. Um, and GP Cog hosted a convening in gray. Um, I forgot to write down the date when that was. I think it was end of October. Um, Dan and Josh and I were in attendance, um, as were um, representatives from North Yarmouth, Pownall, Durham, New Gloucester. I, th I think that was everybody, and GP Cog. Um, we had a really fruitful conversation um, and identified some common themes and issues in all the towns, particularly around workforce retention managing growth responsibly and paying for infrastructure and services with increased costs and also increased um, expectations from community members. Um, the group was interested in continuing to convene on a semi-regular basis. Um, so I'm looking forward to those conversations continuing. Um, and also um, after the meeting ended, uh, some representatives from North Yarmouth, Yar North Yarmouth approached us about having a conversation about um, potentially exploring some charter amendments in their community um, that we that we had enacted. Um, they're potentially interested in moving from select board to town council style of government and just we're hoping to have um, conversation with us in the future. I haven't heard from them, but um, just as heads up if that comes up. Um, actually, um, Krista, can I just interrupt you for a moment and go yeah. back to the, the November 28th workshop, and that is solely for uh, focused on the open space subdivision? That was the intention, okay. yeah. All right, so I'm going to give the 
um, open space committee a heads up on that. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, if, if they would like to attend, maybe. that certainly, yeah. yeah. Um, um, on October 24th, um, several of us attended the um, community input session for the town manager search. It was minimally attended, <laughs> but I think um, it's, it was, I know it was recorded and I'm hoping some people were able to watch it um, after the fact. Um, the town manager job was posted um, on November 1st and from what I hear, we have about seven responses to date. Um, just as a reminder, on the process, we'll be reviewing um, the first round of applicants at an executive session on our meeting on December 5th, and then planning to have a first round of interviews the week of December 11th. Um, and I'm sure Anne will go over this in her comments, but um, we have been meeting, and definitely regularly <laughs> meeting with principal group, and we've had, um, we have since had a hearing with MD, uh, excuse me, a, a meeting with MDOT uh, to talk about um, next steps for the raise grant um, and the work in the village. Um, we're hoping to have the MOU within the next month. And the meeting we had on November 7th, we really came to um, some good agreements around next steps. They're hoping to do some traffic counts, um, some installing the Mayo Vision camera, which can. Um, take pictures of what's going on in the intersections um, to understand how traffic's flowing. And then we also had some um, discussions around the purpose and need for the grant. Um, we'll be reviewing that content later. Um, they are also planning on going back to their staff to do a um, review with the his around some historical properties in town and just giving us advice on how to approach those. Um, and then they also mentioned their implementing some new policies in by the calendar year around um, creating like safer streets and um, more um, accessible streets to all types of um, pedestrians and traffic um, and they were hoping to pilot a lot of those ideas in gray so I thought that was really good news um, and then just as a reminder the MDOT has also scheduled a public hearing although I don't think they're calling it that what do they call it public Pub meeting, public meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, for November 27th from 6 to 8 to discuss the um, infrastructure improvements on Route 100 North from Wayne Avenue to the town line. Um, on November 3rd, I attended the vault, um, the latest opening of the vault trail. Um, and I want to thank Anne and um, staff for organizing that event. There was quite a few people who came out to celebrate the opening and we walked the trail afterwards and it's, um, it's a really nice little trail. They've, they've um, incorporated a lot of the, the trees within the trail, and it's, it's a really pleasant little walk. Um, and then we made a, a circuitous route back to Town Hall, and it all <laughs> functioned very well. Um, so I was happy to do that. Um, was I that? Oh, I also wanted to note um, tomorrow I'll be attending the GP Cog legislative meeting, um, which GP Cog is hosting in North Yarmouth for just, I think, anyone, if they're a member of communities, to come and meet and greet with legislative representatives. Um, I just wanted to touch on some of the priorities we had identified at our retreat, and I think it's going to be a fairly informal kind of just gathering, but um, if I do meet with people, I know we had identified some priorities for the town. Mm -hmm. um, LD1 was one, which I think we heard this week was moving forward in this legislative session. Um, sorry, I'm just looking for my notes. We had talked about um, the tax implications around solar arrays. Yep. I can't, I'm trying, I missed writing it down, I'm trying to find my retreat notes. Um, what were some of the other, what were some of the other priorities we had for the legislature that others remember? Oh, here it is. Raise grant LD. Oh, the raise grant LD one solar array property tax exemption. Oh, the ADU impacts of LD two thousand three and um, just the increased propensity for overruling um, home rule through mandates. That was the, that's what I had for notes on legislative priorities. Um, if anyone has any other ones they think of after tonight, you can just email me and I'll try to raise them as I have conversations tomorrow. Dan, you had a... Um, I know we talked about our relationship with MDOT and MTA and how mm -hmm. 
you know, things like complete streets and the comp plan and um, just having some help in getting them to pay more attention to those now that we have them. It sounds like in MDOT's case, from what you said and what Ann reported to us, that you know there's some good progress being made that way. So that's that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's that's nice to hear. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'll mention that as kind of part of our whole infrastructure work. Also, um, chairs in a circle. GP Cogs hosting that on November 29th. I'm definitely going. Dan's kind of a maybe, um, just based on some personal things, right? Yep. Yes. Um, and then um, just I wanted to talk about just I don't, I don't necessarily want to get into scheduling these, but I just wanted to raise some workshop topics that have kind of risen to the surface that I've had people inquire about. Um, we have the executive committee, um, excuse me, the executive session on, on December 5th, which isn't really a workshop, but we will we use our workshop space to review interview um to review, uh, excuse me, town manager candidates. I've had a request from uh, Sandy Carter and the uh, Grain and Gloucester Little, Little League to come in um, to one of our council meetings in December to present um, their, the progress they've made on submitting a major league baseball grant for the Douglas Field relocation over to the Gateway property. Um, so I was planning to add that to the agenda, one of those agendas. Um, but in regards to workshops, um, Tammy had also requested a workshop for um, addressing some fees around the shoreland zone for people that are potentially building things outside of a permitting process. Um, Lacey was here earlier to comment. She was um, curious about having a um, workshop with the chief and Mo and the Blueberry Festival Committee to talk about basically budgeting for next year's festival and the expanded needs they have for public safety um, and I thought that warranted a conversation in advance of the budget mm -hmm. um, and then Anne, you raised that the resiliency committee was hoping to come in to, I'm assuming to talk about any grant proposals that might they might be forthcoming um, to submit to the state through the community resilience yeah, partnership and then we also need to find time to talk about the MOU from the MDOT when that's ready. And then Dan, I know you've been busy <laughs> at work with a lot of um, potential workshop topics and I have kind of lost track of them. I was wondering if you might just email me like a list of your workshop ideas or if you wanna talk about them later. Sure. Um, that might help me just keep track of them better. Um, and I think that's that's all I had, which was a lot. So. May I throw one more suggestion on there? Yeah. I think we need a budget, a workshop about our budget process. Oh, we did. That was another one. Yep. yep. I had just forgotten that nope. budget process <laughs> yeah. workshop. Let's just skip the budget this year. <laughs> fine by me, but yeah, fine or fine by me until July one. Yeah, I don't so, know what we do. <laughs> yeah. So that was actually my question. What have I forgotten? Uh, and then we we will, I will be sending out emails to find time for all this because. Um, I think we try to figure that all out right now, especially with the holidays. It's going to be a little tricky. So I'll send a poll around or something to figure out where we can slot some stuff in. Um, but did anyone else have any workshop, pending workshop stuff that I'm not remembering? I know, Dan, I have, you have several <laughs> that I'm not remembering. But, it's all right. Um, no. I don't. No? Okay. All right. So let's move on. Um, Josh, you, next up. You're up next for a report from the town manager. Thank you. Um, kind of on my loose outline, I'm skipping around a little bit. The first thing I would like is actually we are making a request of council. Uh, for on packet page 41 is the position for the transfer station attendant, which is currently open and being hired. What we have found is that there are some highly skilled and very desirable applicants who lack a high school diploma. So between the transfer station um, director, human resources, and myself, we are requesting a council the ability to change the position standards from minimum education to high school of high school diploma to high school diploma slash GED preferred. This would just allow the latitude for the director to hire the people that he sees fit, best fit for the job. And if this is a horrible mistake, then we can correct it in the future. But I think this mm -hmm. certainly for this position does not detract. Mm -hmm. This is not, there's no requirement for of education in order to move forward with this position. So I fully support the idea and yeah. I'm looking for yeah. some consent on that. I think that makes sense. Excellent. I'm just curious, you want to change it from high school diploma to High school diploma or GED 
Or right now, it's um, high school diploma and GED are both marked off under the prerequisite or the prerequisite or the oh, essential. So right, rather than making it mandatory, make it a preferred. So that if someone who does not have a high school diploma or GED may still be able to obtain the position. Oh, okay. All right. I just oh, want yeah. to make sure I understood. And that, you know, that person with some maybe coaching from the town could connect with the mm -hmm. adult ed at the district and use the educational funds perhaps to get their GED if they don't already have it. It'd be something to offer up to, to an, an employee. I like that thinking. Who uh, comes I on board. Support that. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. I'll cast out all your community resources and we'll get that going. Um, so I don't know who, I assume everyone at one point in time was around Pennell sometime on election day on, Lord, everything goes so fast, November 7th. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, I would just like to extend my heartfelt thanks to pretty much every citizen who showed up to vote, um, every election worker who showed up. We had five returning workers and six new electors. Um, the citizen engagement was just far exceeded any expectations, but essentially uh, Britt Barton, our town clerk, arranged it so that despite the massive influx of people that no one was really expecting, it went off at, without a hitch. We heard frequent comments from both election workers and people at the polls that it was smooth, it was orderly. Um, she made sure that the election workers were really appreciated both before, during, and after. And they have written back expressing their support both for her and the entire process. And it just made me incredibly happy as a town manager to see yeah. such an incredibly wonderful election. Mm -hmm. uh, just for some quick numbers, voter participation was 37% for an off-year election. They had 45 people registered to vote in the month beforehand, 59 on the day of the election, with 730 absentee voters and almost 2,000 full voters. So that just blew, yeah, again, if we went back to last June with our last vote for the budget, that was about 1,200 people, if I believe. So this is just mm -hmm. a wonderful, remarkable achievement, and the fact it was pulled off so wonderfully is just definitely worthy of commendation. I uh, just wanted to let you know that with some help from the communications and IT interim director, we are looking to adjust our AP process by going to a little bit of an electronic system. So this would be pretty much a form that is filled out online that then generates for the finance director. It's a little experiment we're trying first with only one or two departments, myself and the library included, to make sure that it still fits the tracking requirements we have, that it's a clean process, and then also to ensure that the AP check by council on the back end of it is just as easy and clean. So I, the hope is very much this will be a streamlined process that we are looking to do a little test on to hire out any hinks before we do a full presentation on what that will look like. Uh, uh, just want to remind people that the all town offices will be closed next Thursday and Friday for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, but the transfer station at the library and transfer station will be open on Saturday and the transfer stations working normal hours on Sunday. So if you need your trash needs on Thursday or Friday, please keep that in mind. Hold off till the weekend. And that's much appreciated. And as we are entering into the dark and stormy times, just to remind people of when town services are impacted by storms, we do try and make every effort to get those announcements out as early as possible. If you are checking, the best places to look would be the town website, our Facebook, and also we post it on channels, on the news channel 6, 8, and 13. So if you're wondering for open, those would be the best ways for people to look and see that. And people can also sign up for your email. And also the email blast as well is always, yes, is always <laughs> recommended and very helpful. And we're on Instagram now. And Instagram, as yeah. we have just launched the other day. Yeah. So our digital media coordinator, I can see him smiling in the back right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> And I did just really want to thank Anne um, for the VTP, which is what we're calling the Village Transformation Project. I think that through her efforts and as well as the movements that have been made, this is now a much more cohesive project that we are getting really excited to reintroduce the yeah, community to. For sure. It feels like we've had some fits and starts and kind of this project off this side, this one was talking about here, and I think that we have a really clear, co cohesive vision for the entire scope of the project that we are really getting excited about. Mm -hmm. And that's what I got. Okay, thanks, Josh. Okay, next up is uh, committee reports. Um, Anne, would you start? Sure. Um, uh, Resiliency Committee met. Yay! Yay! Um, <laughs> Uh, so Jane Chandler will continue as chair. Um, there was an issue with the minutes from prior meetings not being, uh, not having been posted on the town website. Kyle corrected that, and um, thanks that for for that, Kyle. Uh, the committee's focus is, you know, um, a number of things, but primarily on this upcoming 
grant opportunity. There's no grant out there yet, but the anticipated deadline is something like March of 2024. So uh, I had checked in with Krista about uh, seeking some, some sort of workshop time or something with the council. Um, our next meeting is on November 27th. Open Space has met, um, and at the last two meetings, we've met with developers of open space subdivisions. Um, and the experience has been really positive. I'm, I, we're quite excited about it. We found that meeting with developers early in the process, not surprisingly, before they've spent a lot of money, means that they're more willing to hear our suggestions about uh, kind of where the open space should be in the subdivision and what are the opportunities to kind of protect and connect uh, which is the mantra of the of the open space plan, uh, the new proposed open space with existing open space or trail corridors, and and to create public access at least to those trail corridors, um, and uh, it, it I think the committee's pretty excited to feel like they're doing sort of mean you know not that the work hasn't been meaningful but to, to actually sort of be doing some hands on work around meat and uh, potatoes meat and potatoes yeah of open space preservation or conservation. And then um, the, at the last meeting, we also, uh, the, the committee reviewed staff's proposed changes to the open space subdivision law and made a few suggestions. Uh, CEDC has not met, and uh, I guess we're still looking for some new members, so it's, uh, I wouldn't say the sky's the limit with this committee, but there's lots of opportunities to define how you get engaged with the town, and the town works when uh, it, it, it really works through our staff, yes, but uh, largely also through our volunteers, and, and so please do sign up for that committee. That's it for me. Okay. Dan? Um, I don't have any committee reports. Um, you mentioned the GPCOG get-together uh, in October on the 18th. Um, I did meet with uh, Brandon and Brad Pollard down at the Coal Farms place. They're interested in the um, making some changes to the cannabis ordinance and have been in to speak to the council on that. Uh, that was a good good long conversation that I had with them. Um, I've spent some time working on the accounts payable and the payroll warrant process. Um, I think I've got, although I, I'm not sure anymore after your report, <laughs> I don't know if I'm wasting my time or not. No, no, no. Um, but uh, the AP process is pretty well done. We have a finance committee meeting on Thursday and uh, hope to go over it with the committee then. Um, Was that one of your workshop items? I know, I'm sorry. I've no. <laughs> well, <laughs> My brain I, is I don't think we have to do it as a workshop. Okay. It's a training. Yeah, yeah, I think we can okay. do it that All way. Right. Um, what I was going to suggest is that when people do their rotation, if they want, I'd be happy to come in and, you know, and answer any questions. And certainly Justine could do that too. It's actually, it's pretty straightforward. Um, Jody Kandel, who's also on the finance committee, um, was in, um, I can't remember, yeah, last week, and we did it, and she thought that it was pretty clear cut. So, and Justine's made some adjustments to some of the reports that she's printing for us. So, so I think that's coming together. So hopefully, I'm hoping that by um, the beginning of the year, we can get in the rotation that we yeah. talked about. Thank you for working to document yeah, all that. Really sure, appreciate. yeah. Um, we're doing committee reports right now. Yeah. Right? Yep, I'm done then. Okay. <laughs> Marty? Okay, the, the zoning board will meet uh, November 29th at 7 p.m. Uh, the notes I have for planning committee, uh, Dan will, will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the next meeting is December 14th at 7 o'clock. That's correct. And there will be a site walk on Eagle's Nest Road on December 8th at 3 p.m. Wild Blueberry Festival is a workshop in the works. We don't know when the date to be announced. Uh, nothing to report for, for the, uh, the community day. And finance, the finance committee meets November 16th, two days from now at, at 4 p.m. And that's all I have. Thanks, Marty. Matthew? Um, <clears throat> the rec committee uh, met on November 6th. Um, they reported uh, they had to reschedule the trunk or treat because of the events in Lewiston, um, which you know resulted in, in lower attendance than they anticipated, but understandable. But they also um, the issue arose where they felt like uh, they needed a police presence there, hmm. and um, 
it, you know, and, and it was, um, and there was expenses associated with that. They, it was in com combination with um, New Gloucester. But they, there was a discussion that ensued about, you know, when is that, um, you know, when, you know, like, it, does the town have a policy about when there should be, um, you know, public safety um, officials required at, you know, mass gatherings and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, um, and I told them I would bring that question to the, to the council, um, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, there, if there's a desire to work on, on such a policy or if one already exists. Um, but, you know, also, you know, it would help for budgeting and, and, and planning if, if an event is, is going to have, you know, a requirement to have police there that usually there's a, you know, there's an expense associated with that. Um, for you know, like sort of minimum number of overtime hours for deputies to be there. Mm -hmm. um, um, and yeah, there was a question of whether or not the school resource officer could be could be tapped for those those sort of things. Um, I, I don't know the, how that works, but <clears throat> I'm just bringing it up to the council. Um, so. Um, they also had a you know presence at the uh, we were involved in the vault trail grand opening, um, and uh, apparently there's been improvements to the bus safety issue that I brought uh, that I mentioned last time. Oh. Um, they've, they've put some things in place and talked to some people, and that, that seems to be um, working itself out. Um, um, they're um, they do have bingo um, the second Friday of every month, starting in December. Um, uh, tree lighting is um, uh, scheduled for the um, Sunday after Thanksgiving on November 26th. There'll be carolers. Uh, Santa will arrive on a fire truck uh, and um, There'll be a you know a, in the gym people will be able to get their picture taken with with Santa, um, and that's that's 4 p.m. on November 26th, um, and they will also be collecting um, uh, uh, our GNG um, caring community will be collecting shoe boxes and gifts um, for holiday gifts for families in need. Mm -hmm. Um, and the next meeting, hmm. yeah, so the rec committee will meet again, um, uh, Monday, December 4th at 6 p.m. Um, I also met with the Gray um, Community Television Committee. Um, they have a couple of new productions. One, um, they did a, a, a thing at, at Lonnie Dogs and as well as a Vault Trail opening. Um, and um, yeah, they met on the 25th. Um, and the the um, uh, yeah, they're meeting again on December twenty seventh, and I've gone by the the Dry Mill Schoolhouse is meeting um, on the twentieth uh, on Monday, and. Uh, yeah, Great TV is meeting again on the 22nd. <coughs> so that's all I've got. Great. Thank you, Matthew. Um, for me, uh, the Ordinance Advisory Committee met on October 19th and um, November 9th, and we're meeting again on November 30th. Um, we've been having a lot of really fruitful discussions around the open space subdivision changes. Um, 
necessary to comply with LD 2003, but also um, looking, looking towards the future with um, potential um, edits that would also be aligned with our comprehensive plan. Um, the workshop we're having as a council on November 28th will um, review some of those suggested changes. Uh, excuse me, the 28th, mm -hmm. that is 5.30? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Okay. I know you had um, library. Right, right. That, that started at 6.30? Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. Um, the GPCOG Executive Committee met today, um, this afternoon. Uh, we had a presentation um, from Paul Johnson about some grants that are available for businesses, um, new businesses. <coughs> he will be sending me some materials that I was hoping to send to Kyle so that he could um, put them out towards the public. Um, basically, there are small business grants, um, both for businesses that opened during the pandemic and had a loss of income as a result, and, all, and then also a, there's a series of grants available just to um, small businesses to help them um, grow and expand um, their their base for um, profits, essentially. Um, so I, I'll be getting those documents. We also had um, a strategic planning conversation. Uh, GPCOG is currently redoing their, um, or updating their strategic plan, which was um, last done in 2017. They're hoping to have that process done by the spring of 2024. So we had some conversations around vision and mission today. Um, they're meeting again in January because they take the month of December off. That's all I have for committees. Um, Matthew, do you want to start out um, correspondence and activities? Um, I don't have any. Okay. Marty? I have no correspondence or activities to report. Okay. Dan? Um, yeah, I've got a few things. Um, I think I already mentioned that I spoke with the Pollards about um, their interest in the cannabis uh, ordinance changes. I know the council has d has decided to create an ad hoc committee. I don't know what the timeline is for that. Um, I think Matthew and I were going to meet, uh, and we haven't we haven't okay. established a timeline yet. But that would be one of the part of our conversation. That and the charge. Okay. We were yeah. I also, um, well, let's see. Um, I sent everybody some information about HOAs. Um, I've spoke to this in the past about um, as we require more and more from subdivisions, especially um, with regards to roads and those expenses, about seeing a way um, for them to uh, use the buying power of the town to maybe mitigate some of those costs, but without incurring any costs for the town. Um, I also sent you um, uh, some information about, I had a conversation with Steve McPike about um, invasive species and, and uh, not weed up at the beginning of the Libby Hill trails. Um, it, turns out is that conversation involved that Mo is in the process of becoming uh, um, licensed to be able to take care of those things. I think it's going to be a budget item that we'll have to figure out. Um, some of these things, if we jump on them pretty quick, I know there's some knotweed around the Pennell campus too. Um, with the road work, it seems inevitable now that whenever there's any ditching or any road work, there's new infestations of knotweed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just, I think it's something that we should put some time into. Um, there's a big infestation of it over off of Yarmouth Road, which has been talked about with the whole Yarmouth Road project. Yeah. Um, when it gets to, the, 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 to where it is over on Yarmouth Road, it becomes very difficult and expensive to, to mitigate it. Yeah, there, there is actually a small, <clears throat> small infestation that could probably be eradicated over on uh, Weymouth Road, um, right, you know, close to the Heaven's, heaven's door yep. end of the road. I, I think that's why I think it's a budget item because yeah. I think that if we're going to, if it is something that we want to address, um, it is going to require um, us to spend some money to survey 
the problem and find out how extensive it is. And certainly the public works people can help with that. Um, it seems like that we should add this to our list of budget discussions. I would like us to, yes, yeah. Um, we already talked about the AP and the payroll warrant um, information. I sent you, I, I shared some information about um, some new technology that's coming as far as uh, home sprinklers are concerned. I don't know if I shared that with everybody or yeah, not. Yeah, I think you did. I feel like um, I, haven't, I haven't read that one, but I um, And I think that, um, and I think that that's all that I have. I do have a question for the council. We've talked about this several times. Um, I sent everybody an email um, about my idea for residential construction and commercial zones and also for um, cistern and fire protection throughout town, um, which would require a change to the subdivision ordinances. Um, the <coughs> chief has given me some information. There is a, there is a question of legality in both cases. Um, I would like the council's permission to ask Josh to talk with the town's attorney and find out, you know, is there, um, is there a legal hurdle that's just not worth trying to get over uh, before we put any time into uh, pulling together some proposals for the council on both of those. Are you talking um, with the, in regards to the residential construction one? Are you talking about the, pro the proposal you had for a mor moratorium yes. for ones in the village? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think we did have some question about legality around okay. that um, before we agree to move forward. And then I know the fire cisterns have come up. Um, I think in your emails, um, I, I believe I responded to that one. Um, um, would that, I think that would also fit potentially into our roads discussion, or did you feel like it was separate? Um, I think it's separate. Okay. Um, I, I ask a question yeah. about the, I mean, the, the, uh, the moratorium and restrictions on residential construction or you know, guidelines, or whatever, not guidelines, but regulations. <clears throat> um, I mean, what would, that would be, to consult with the town attorney on that would, there'd be an expense associated with that and yeah, I, I, I think we've tossed it around, but we didn't really have consensus on whether we'd like to move forward because there were some questions that came up um, about the legality of it and how that would, how that would work. But well, I'm just wondering if, would it make sense to, if, I don't know if it's okay to do it, like, I'm wondering if, if there's support for this mm -hmm. in any event and whether or not we should be spending legal money on it if there's not support for it. Yeah. The council rules are pretty clear. Actually, if you look at them, they say that if somebody wants to request more staff time or legal consults, that a councilor can bring it to the council. And mm -hmm. then if the majority of the council will back it, then we can go forward. And if not, we've talked about it several times, but I haven't been able to get us to the point where we seem to be willing to make a decision. And mm -hmm. I'd like yeah. to get us there. Well, yeah. this is yeah. not on our, our uh, part of our to-do list for this fiscal year, right? I mean, only no, that wasn't. We hadn't. We hadn't agreed to add that. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I well, mean, why I, don't we take a quick straw poll? Is, our, is there interest in pursuing a residential moratorium if it is legal in the village? I, I'm not excited about moratorium generally. Um, yeah. so, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just feel like this is a lot more work than uh, we're prepared or able to take on right now. I mean, I, I, I think it's an interesting idea, but it just feels like we got a lot on our plate right now. I'm not looking for any staff time for either of these efforts. Well, yeah, but ultimately... But I think Matthew's right, there's a cost. There's a cost. There's a cost. Yeah. There's yeah. A cost and, and, you know, the, the attorneys will come back with some sort of opinion and the, we'll have to devote some brain time and decide how to move forward with it. I mean, if we're not prepared to move forward with a moratorium, uh, I don't think we should spend the legal money. I, I, that's that's what, what we're. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what we're trying, I'm trying to find out. So Matthew, yeah. what are your thoughts? On um, very similar to Anne. Yeah, Marty. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I have some concerns about preventing people from buying or you know building a, a home for themselves, whether it's in the village or not. So I'm. I'm it's not the village; it's the commercial zones. But well, the commercial zones with within the village. Um, because I think that was your main concern was road frontage in the village. Was it? Nope. Not? It's oh. commercial zones. Okay. Well, I still have concerns okay. with residential 
moratorium after that. So I it, think it sounds it's a like a huge missed opportunity, but I can't convince you. Okay. Um, the fire cisterns one, um, I, I, previous councils have agreed to move forward with that discussion. Um, oh, there's a comment from Doug here. We have some legal input, RE cisterns. Oh, so we already have some legal input on cisterns. <laughs> um, but yeah, because I probably, because future, uh, prior councils had, de had decided that that was something <coughs> that we wanted to pursue. I don't know, the last time, yeah, okay. The right hand's not talking to the left, but we can sort that out. Well, it was on it was on the uh, work plan. From yeah, no, it was a holdover. I, yeah, yep. yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Um, okay, so we kind of interrupted your correspondence and activities. I'm done. Oh, okay. Um, which way was I going? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think that's I, next. <laughs> um, forget. <laughs> Yeah, just thanks to uh, staff members Kristen Musinski, Anthony Doms, Mo Russo, and Kyle Hadiniak for planning a wonderful ribbon cutting ceremony for the new segment of vault. And uh, that, you know, really, uh, we do a lot of hard work around here and we don't often celebrate uh, our successes. And I thought that that was a great opportunity to do that. So um, it was a really nice event. Uh, thanks also to the Great Community Endowment and Carl Holmquist for donating a bench for the new segment. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Will Boyle also donated Oh, a Will Boyle did. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't involved in that one, but that's true. Um, I had several contacts with, business, uh, with a business owner on Route 26 who was concerned about newly planted street trees that blocked her business sign and created hazards for people exiting her driveway. Um, and uh, I went back and forth with her and with... Uh, our code enforcement officer, uh, Tammy, to, um, to try and resolve that situation. I, I think it's somewhat resolved, but I'm, I'm not certain that it's fully resolved. Um, I had a conversation with a resident, a mother, who reported that a few teenagers were abusing uh, town property behind Pennell um, uh, and also harassing families using the playground um, behind Newbegin. And, um, and I passed this information along to Josh and Mo, and, and um, so uh, this the same teenagers were also apparently out on Halloween night harassing people along uh, in, up in Maine Meadows, and um, <coughs> so I there's you know we know who they are um, uh, apparently at this point, and I I, I think we're just, that we're just <coughs> trying to figure out how to move forward with contacting their parents and sort of dealing with the situation. Call the deputy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm I'm a resident of May Meadow. Um, just there, I believe that the teenagers have been identified. They, I know, um, they had issued an apology to our neighborhood. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't know about what happened behind Pennell, but I can speak to the. Neighborhood. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, yeah, I haven't heard back from the that that individual. So I did encourage her to, to contact the deputy. Um, I attended the first meeting of the Vision Zero advisory panel. Um, much of that first meeting was devoted to introductions and to an overview of the purpose of Vision Zero and the, and the, and the work of the panel. Uh, there will be about three or four other meetings before the end of the process. Uh, and the goal is to gather input and from the panel and come up with recommendations for road, um, possibly some intersection improvements that can form the basis for a grant application. Um, I, um, I asked about the potential for Gray's VTP project to be a focus, but it sounded as if they were looking for improvements along longer corridors, so um, that's to be determined. Well, I'll keep advocating for that. I did advocate when they were looking for a name, because this Vision Zero effort is, is directed towards towns outside Portland and the inner suburban ring. Um, so I, I, there were sort of different three different clusters of towns I, I suggested the, the, the cluster that we're in that could be called Greater Gray, but um, I didn't get any love from that. Um, <laughs> Good try. <laughs> <laughs> Christina did call our convening in gray, gray, the Greater Gray convening. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll own that one. Um, and, uh, see, and, and yeah, as Krista mentioned, um, uh, Krista mentioned that the MDOT is moving the date of the public meeting on Route 100 from no November 13th to November 27th. Obviously, we're past November 13th, so it didn't happen. Um, but uh, that's, uh, that'll be six to eight via Zoom. Um, Senator Susan Collins informed the town this week that, or last week, that the CDS proposal, the Congressionally Directed Spending Proposal uh, that um, I wrote for the town last, week, uh, last spring um, 
for funding for a new sidewalk on Libby Hill Road and some related public safety improvements around the high school and middle school grounds. Um, uh, was included in the Senate's version of the Transportation and Housing and Urban Development Bill. Uh, so it's passed the Senate. It does need to go to reconciliation with the House of Representatives. And um, so, so, you know, that's anybody's guess when and if that'll happen. But I mean, that's sort of, it's good news for it now. Is, good news, is that right? part of the uh, pending funding of the government that expires on November 15th? Or <coughs> is that separate process? I think it's separate. It's okay. the next year's. Funding, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, and I, I don't think that they included anything like that. And this is just the the, the funding they approved. I think uh, the extension of the continuing resolution, I think it's called, is um, is just sort of existing funding continued. Yeah, I did know that that it was exist, but I okay, never mind. That, that's good to know. Um, I, I submitted testimony today and, and also testified on behalf of LD 1976, which is an act to update the growth management law. Um, I, I want to be clear that I did not do so representing the Greytown Council um, and made clear it was my personal views. Um, there was a lot of support for it, but I think a lot of recognition that it's, uh, it needs some workshopping, let's just say that. Um, it needs, some, it needs uh, uh, more process before it's done. Um, and then just, yeah, we've had a, we had a great meeting with MDOT on October 27th for the Village Transportation Project. Um, and. Um, I, there's a lot of work that remains to be done, but at the moment things look pretty positive and I'm uh, chasing um, MDOT for the next draft of the MOU and, and um, some other stuff, but in. They, they say daily it's coming, so we'll see. They delivered something, just can't be opened. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that ended up being the vision and pur or the purpose, purpose and need. And need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, that, we'll, we'll work on that. I, I offered to, to edit the purpose and need because I thought it might take them a long time to get to it. Um, just on that note, um, when we do get the MOU, we might need to act on that fast. So um, I'm assuming the whole council wants to see the MOU before we send it back to um, the MDOT with any edits. Is that, is that a correct assumption? Yeah. So we might need to kind of call an impromptu workshop, although we need to notice that by a week. I mean, I'm sure the MDOT well, would know our, know that about our processes, right, about the week's notice. and. Yeah, I, I don't think they'll put any time, this is, you know, okay. particular time. We, there isn't a, an urgency to approving it other than we need to get it done so we can just focus on getting the work done. Right. But I mean, it's not going to affect an, uh, an immediate <laughs> upcoming grant deadline, for example. Right. But I think we're continuing to march down the same street, as it were, um, in, in the same direction, which is not where we've been uh, in more recent months. So I, I don't, it's not holding up our progress at this point, I guess is what I'd say, but okay. I, or at least, but I, I do think we should get it done as, as quickly as possible. I mean, is it is it possible, I mean, I, I, the, uh, I mean, is it possible to, um, to edit it? Um, I mean, we've taken several bites at this we already, have. and, and I, so I wonder if it's possible to kind of edit it online amongst ourselves and then um, talk about it and, <coughs> and formally approve it in, a, in one of our regular meetings. I don't, I'm not sure what the protocol is. Um, well, I mean, we, it's hard because you don't want to have discussions over email. Mm -hmm. right. um, but I think that if people each took their own drafts and did a marked up version of it and submitted it for packet prior to a meeting, I think that would be... Without yeah. discussing it, like, what do you think of this? What do you think of yeah. that? Not even a shared document, but each individual, if they so wish, to kind of give their in inputs and edits. Yeah, I'm, I guess I don't. I don't know what the. I'm not sure. I mean, that would work. I don't know what the best process would be. I mean, what what you're doing this, Anne, mostly. So, what would you prefer to see from as an output? From uh, I mean, it's tough to. Um, it's it's tough to edit a document. Um, you know, by committee, I, and I mean, yeah. and whether we're doing it back and forth by email, I mean, that that's one way to do it. I mean, when I edit documents with people, I tend to put them on Google Docs, and, and then we all just take a yeah. whack at it. And uh, and 
I, for something like this, I don't know if that's if that's allowed. But I mean, I I, I don't I wouldn't want to burn up a lot of council time, uh, you know, editing by committee. I mean, we do have the ability through the Microsoft Suite to have like editable shared documents, right? We do, but then that kind of very much, to my opinion, kind well, of gets kind close of like to meeting. a discussion. Yeah, of yeah, you're right. Outside yeah, public purview, yeah. yeah, just okay. or yeah, it comes close enough that I would just uh, council not. Based well, on. um, couldn't why why couldn't we? I think Josh's plan, I mean, is a middle ground. If yeah. we schedule it for that meeting in December, and then we all take a crack at it if we want to, and mm -hmm. then we can just review it. Yeah, yeah, we have the executive session already on the fifth with Don. Um, I mean, we could do it during we could do it during the discussion for the before the vote. If you want to. Oh, we could do that. Yeah. So just put it on yeah. the agenda for the. Yeah. We'll December have it on the agenda, meeting. and yeah. then. Uh, hopefully we'll have it by then. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I'm going to tell we Dale can submit. That it's on our Yeah, why don't you do that? <laughs> Actually, that's yeah. a good idea. And then we can submit ed edits for the pack for the packet. Yeah. So the time it becomes paramount. Yeah. Just so make sure that we get everything. The, in the packet, packet would be due right. that's November twenty seventh. Okay. Okay. And if we have to table it because it's not ready, then yeah. we could just yeah. table it to right. the next meeting. Or to our edits, we realize people are miles away as far as what they're concerned with and what they're yeah. pulling for on it. I mean, unless it's changed substantially, like you said, we've already had a crack at it. Yeah, I, I mean, that's actually what I was sort of thinking about is maybe could we empower, uh, I, I mean, could. Uh, could we empower Josh to negotiate those changes? But I, I don't know. I mean, and then there's still no. We need still need input from the council. So yeah, I think yeah. the way it's that we to came up with it, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, because we did it in a workshop the last time we had to edit the MOU, but we didn't see it until the night we were looking, like right. the night we had to talk yeah. about it, and I felt really unprepared to make yeah. comments. Right. Right. I, yeah, without um, having some time to sort of contemplate the connections, it's a. It's a complicated document. Yeah, it is. There's, yeah. And there's a big impact. And the, yeah, and the staff. I mean, I think uh, certainly Doug and <clears throat> probably will need to weigh in on it as well. Yeah, but Doug did provide us um, with yeah, a memo with, for yeah. things he thought should definitely be in the MOU. And I, if you don't have that, let me know. I can get it to you. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. One of the questions along mm -hmm. that, not to make a discussion out of it, but is just the what's the decision making? I mean, we're moving fast and different corners with different subsets of the council and what's, you know, where's the line between moving a project forward and something the whole council needs to be, needs to have the ability to have some say in is getting a little foggy. Right. I, I, actually, that's a good point. And I, so we should add that to a workshop Shop. list. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's workshop workshop list. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, what do you want me to call it? <laughs> I just, you know, council BTP worked Decision making. Out. Yeah. yeah. Council decision making I mean, process. it's not so much the decision, well, I mean, partly, uh, we could certainly discuss the decision making process, but there may very well, I don't know what the timing of that is. It could be January, um, it, you know, could be February or March. I don't know. I mean, we know, I will hopefully know more a little bit, you know, in a little bit, but um, at some point, the council may need to weigh in on some of the design features. That's what oh, I'm you're thinking. speaking specifically to the MDOT work? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah, thought you just meant, to... like, in general, how no. we decide things. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, well, well, I mean, that could be a really deep we're, conversation. We're, we're trapped in the... In, in, In the fact that none of us individually have any authority, <laughs> right? We have to we have to convince two other people to agree with us in order to make anything happen, and that is wicked inefficient. Yeah, and it's slow. It's very so, slow. So you know, is there a way for us to find a way to maybe make that go faster, but not sort of, I guess you know, violate the the that restriction. Yeah, that's why I was trying to think if there's some way we could sort of empower the town manager to negotiate the MOU, for example. But I mean, that's still, uh, I, you know, I would certainly want to be able to take a look at the MOU and, and yeah. provide input. So, um, and I'm sure other others of you would as well. Uh, so, uh, but I was more thinking. I'm like, currently the the, I, mean, I I'm more concerned about if there are <coughs> decisions need to be made about things like. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is a big one, but the underground utilities. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, but other, there may be smaller things. I mean, right now we're actually 
very much on target uh, in terms of the design with where the council kind of left off last last spring. So I, I feel confident that there's no, um, you know, that I'm 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 not remiss or, or you know that we're not we're not making decisions um, of, over something you guys haven't had an input on at this point. So no, and and so we'll just have to just play it by ear. And if when things when those things come up, I think we'll. Well, no, and I think having Krista and I and Josh involved in the process is, is helpful because there's it's not just one person's opinion at that point. Well, yeah, but again, it, it's not necessarily the, the council's either at that point. So, I mean, what you sent around to us for, was really helpful, I thought, that sort of update that you sent. That um, I think it, you know, we meet twice a month and we can only make decisions when we meet and we can only make decisions if three of us agree. And so how do we, I mean, I think it is a, I won't say a fatal flaw in our process, but it certainly gums things up. And is there a way for us to work within the framework we have, but maybe work quicker or more efficient? I don't know, I think yeah. it's worth pursuing. Well, I mean, maybe there's a way to add a sort of a standing item on the agenda or something like that for, for the decisions that need to get made about, about the uh, BTP. I, I don't know whether yeah. whether Alyssa could advise us on that, but no, that would be kosher. You can have standing agenda items. Yeah, I mean, I, we it's can, like you right. know, these citizen comments and non-agenda items. Yeah. I mean, it just is there all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I, I mean, again, I, I think if we can continue to make progress at the, you know, uh, uh, we, we seem to have some unan unanimity on the on the plan and the design. Uh, I, in my mind, this is a bit like building a house. You know, you think when you have. You know the design. You think you've got it in the bag, but then if all of a sudden you're like, where do the light switches go, and and where what color paint do you want, and where all the of a sudden you can't do that. Yeah, you, you know, and and then it it just you, your head started starts exploding, and and um so I, I fully anticipate that there'll be some of those kinds of things uh, that as we move through this process, but I mean because there's not an immediate grant deadline, we we actually do have some time to work through this, so I'm not as worried about that. Yeah. Good, thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail No, you. I think that was it for me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, this is important stuff. So we, it we is. We've got to figure this out. Yeah. yeah. This lasts I, much longer than the conversation will. So yeah. that, it's, it's, worth, it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth right. the time. Um, that conversation actually reminded me that of something that came up kind of after our meeting with the DOT concluded, where we were just sort of um, having a chat with principal group, where they were talking about the work um, they wanted to pursue in their contract going forward, and we needed to... We need to um, regroup around that work and what that means. I think before Nate left, he had had conversations with principal um, that none of us were really privy to. Um, and so I'm a little unclear about what the direction, the directions they received um, in their well, contract. That, so I, Nate signed the contract that yeah. is kind of a master contract right. uh, that's pretty general in its scope. But um, so then the next step is to negotiate a scope of work that's more defined. And uh, Vanessa is supposed to be getting back to us with that scope of work. We have a, a BTP uh, check-in meeting on okay. Friday, and I was um, hoping that I'll, I'll nudge her again. But I mean, okay. I, I, she, she was ill last week, and she had a lot. No, that's so I, fine. I'm, sure that's, I'm glad to hear she's going to come back with some information, because when, uh, when it came up, uh, she was kind of talking like we had already given her direction, right. and I felt like we hadn't. So I'm I'm, I'm glad to hear. Yeah, she's I think she's out. pretty clear. She needs to she she needs to give us two things, and one is an accounting of what funding has been spent to date on yeah. a, a contract, and then the second is a, a, a scope of work for like the next three months or something. Okay, like that. that's good to hear. All right. Yeah, because my concern is we're going to burn through that money and not have achieved yeah. the goal. It's a real, real and, thing. And yeah. I think if we're not watching that. It could happen. Yeah. Right. And it, um, I had an email from Doug today also about the TIF funds and how we've allocated them and how the legality of, of there was that in the village TIF, there was the $70,000 allocation that we were only allowed to expend for a certain item. Um, there's some questions around what that means, so whether it's yearly or for the life of the TIF. So we need to address those questions also. Well, in the water districts. TIF, the money that we gave the water district is still an open question. Well, I, I, I sent an email about that. I had some historical documents from Sandy and some context, and, but we should talk about it um, because it sounds like there was some agreements made back when that was amended that was relevant to the money that we allocated in FY23. So we, we can talk about it further. And okay. I can, 
find the email again <laughs> if necessary. Um, I my correspondence I, I touched on most of them um, in my um, chair report, but I, I did have some, as many of you did, um, some emails about the hearing this evening um, and a ZBA issue on Lewiston Road. Um, I think that's I think that's it for today. Uh, we're running quite long um, due to the public hearing, but um, so I'm just looking for a motion to adjourn at 10:07 p.m. So moved. Okay, um, Matthew? Yes. Marty? Yes. Dan? Yes. Ann? Yes. I'm also a yes. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Yes. That's all you're going to say. It's 11.07 Pendleton time. Yeah. <laughs>